all of that before the first elements of the world, before the heavens are created. All of those things, right? She said from the beginning, I was set up, right? So if she's there before the angels and all of that, when you got to chapter nine, it said wisdom has built her house and honed her seven pillars. Remember, we talk about the seven angels that's born of the fire. So when we looking at from what I brought out in Proverbs, now when the Most High is dealing and he's saying us, representing the Most High, yeah, masculine, the feminine, because the female, right? I said that that is Chakma, the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, wisdom, right? So when you go to Job and you saying, let us go down and confound their language, yes, I didn't say that that was wisdom. I, she, I didn't say that that was her. You go to the book of Enoch, and the book of Enoch will show you that the Most High came down with 70 of his angels with Michael at their head. So I wouldn't have said that you're talking about wisdom there. I said that wait, she wait. was there in the You said the book of Enoch says that in Genesis 11 that, that Michael yes. came down, and, that, and, and no, what did he no, do? That the Most High came down with 70 angels okay. with Michael at the head okay. and told the 70 angels to teach the 70 families, languages, cultures, and whatever else it is, right? And what uh, Every uh, what, book, has of, what book of Enoch is that, sis? What's the reference uh, for that? Uh, the, I think it's like the... Um, and is, is Enoch uh, canonical to you? Uh, I'll take the book of Enoch. I take over it Job. over... Uh, got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it All over cool. Job. Yeah, right, cool. Enoch, I know who Enoch's father is. I don't know who Job's father is. I can't place Job. I can't place Job is Enoch. the oldest book in the Tadak. I just hope who you're aware of that. Who is his father? So, who's whose who? father? Job's. I don't know. Exactly. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people in Tanakh. No, I don't no, know who no, their hold parents on, are. Hold on, hold on. Who is Enoch's father? Who's Nathan's father? And that's the one that went to David. Who's his who, father? Who's who's e Come on, Nathan we can do this all brother. day, sis. Come on. Nathan sis. was his brother. Nathan, Nathan was his brother. Nathan was whose brother? The prophet David that went to David when he yes. slept with Blashita? That was his yes, brother. Nathan was his brother. Look it up. The no, no, again, I'm not looking it up. Who, What's the scripture for that? I'll, I'll You're talking about two you different names. All these now. questions. When you said I'm asking you a lot of questions. Let's deal with this. Enoch okay. father. I know who Enoch father oh, is. I can place man. Enoch. I can't place Joe. This is but bad. But let's get. I'm, I'm past this Joe. Is bad. You said the seventy angels that came. I'm talking about the seventy angels that came down with the Most High when He said, "Let us go down and confound their language." That's not what I was talking about when I was talking about wisdom there in the beginning. We're still talking about in the beginning. Who was that with Yah in the and beginning? And I told you, and you just And I Job. said wisdom. No, but I'm saying wisdom placed herself before he created angels, before he created the heavens. Well, I don't I don't subscribe the to the book of, of Proverbs as canonical because it's just why I say No, no. So, what I'm saying you know, is that grounded. she said, but what I'm saying is what she said. She said she was the first thing created. The first thing created, right? So if she's the first <laughs> thing created, there are no other angels yet. She said before the earth, before the heavens, this is before crazy. any of these I'm things, she was brought forth. She this was given birth. Crazy. So she's saying she's the first creation. That's what I'm saying. Now you go into when the angels came and said, let us come down. That's way after. I didn't say that's those were after. angels, sis. That's not what I well, said. Well, well, you said the sons of whatever, the sons of Benin. Yeah, the Bene whatever. Elohim. I, okay. I just told okay. you, I don't I don't see Proverbs as canonical because it is a book of proverbial sayings. Okay. okay? But so wait, wait, but, hold on, hold on, hold on. But, so but look, wait, wait. Look, look, okay, look, but, okay, okay. But what I'm saying is, according to that, wisdom places herself there before any of these things. Solomon is supposed to be the one accredited with writing this. Then we go, I went to wisdom of Solomon. Then you can go, and, and it says again, I put it in the chat. I'm going to read this again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 9. It said, with you is wisdom. She who knows your works. Is wisdom of Solomon canonical to you as well? Uh, I'll accept this again over Job because oh, it said at least oh, wow. it says Solomon okay. wrote it. So <laughs> Solomon had a lot of writing. Solomon was very smart. He was very wise. So I will take Solomon oh, over Job, shit. who I don't know who his father is, don't know where he comes uh, from. So I the, know who Solomon is. This is incredible. So that's with sense. any writing. That's okay. with any writing, though. I'm just saying that's why I don't accept Job because I can't place him. Don't know who his father I'm is. Glad I'm recording. Don't know this. anything really too much about him from right. So it says. With you is wisdom. She who knows your works. She who was 
present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your eyes and what agrees with your commandments. Dispatch her from the holy heavens. Send her forth from your throne of glory to help me and to toil with me and to teach me what is pleasing to you. So according to Solomon, he's asking the Most High to give him his Holy Spirit so that he, the Most High, wants him to do, to teach him. This is what he's saying. And this also goes with his prayer when, when and that's in the canonized version, right? That you will accept. Solomon prayed and the Most High gave him wisdom, his Holy Spirit. It say the spirit of wisdom resting on Joshua. It rested on David. It rested on uh, Isaiah because this is the Most High's uh, uh, Holy Spirit that he gives to his people to do his will. Now, I asked you for something also. If you're saying that this is not wisdom, that this is not whatever, can you give me a scripture to show me the first thing the Most High created and where it can, where it can be found, right? Because you have to replace her. She, okay, say this not it. Solomon didn't pray for the Holy Spirit. He didn't get it. Uh, it's not there. Then what are you replacing it with? That's all I'm asking. For okay, myself. so you want to know uh, what was created in the beginning, right? All right. So um, this is, I mean, that's a interesting question because I thought it would, it would be assumed. But a better sheep bara Elohim et ha shamayim wa et ha avret. So that's what was created in the beginning. No, no. I'm saying with the let us, right? Because you're saying it's got a us. And, right? I, and I told you what the let us was. I gave you a scripture that you decided to denounce because you don't accept the book of Job as canonical. Oh, okay. And I said, I don't accept the book of Proverbs as canonical because it is proverbial sayings in a recorded form. It is not designed to be scripture per se, right? So if you can find for me any prophets and the Nevi'im who quoted Proverbs, please pull up the verse. Uh, can, I, can, I give you one? Can, I, can I give you one? Sure. I'm going to give you I'll one. I'll go after you. Yeah, we're just building. So this, yeah. is, uh, this is Zechariah 13, 13 and 14. Mm-hmm. Chapter 4, verse 10. Okay. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plumage in the hand of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of Yah, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Okay. Now in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Wisdom has builded her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. Those are the same. Those are the same eyes. That, Wait, uh, the you, eyes, you of the eyes, eyes and pillars. Wow, this is this is this is awesome. It's, All right, so let's. Yeah. Hold on, so, hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> it's the seven. The eye. Those seven are the, the seven oh, in Zerubbabel. This is in, crazy. Um, Zechariah chapter four verse ten. This is it crazy. Says, it describes as the eyes of Yah that run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Wisdom. It's saying <laughs> these are her pillars. She hewn out her pillars. Yo, seven. What crazy. other seven is she talking about? All right, so let's slow down oh, for a second. You so you equated seven eyes, as you said, with seven pillars. That's what you just did. So everywhere I see seven, they're all congruent. That's what you're saying, correct? Because I see, I see seven as well. What about the seven days that was created? Is that the same thing as the seven eyes and the seven pillars? Maybe that's what Wisdom was talking about because she was there for those seven days. Y'all said she was there in the beginning. I mean, I could keep playing this game, but that doesn't make any sense. So uh, I want to get back to what I was saying because I want to address what was going on here, right? I asked somebody to give me somewhere in the prophets where the book of Proverbs is quoted. Nobody has done that, okay? So I'm going to move on for that No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. He he wanted to give you that, and I I agree with what he just brought out because – it's not a seven. She said seven pillars, right? So what are those seven? Well, you tell us what those seven pillars. It say wisdom has builded her a house. And we see in Zechariah 5, when, you, when they're dealing with these female angels who is carrying this wickedness and they go set up in, in Shinar, right? And they say they're building a house in Shinar and they're setting up wickedness, right? Because uh, according to... Uh, what we went through with Genesis when he said, let us go and confound their languages. 
well, I, I went to the book of Enoch and the reference that the Most High had 70 angels go teach over the 70 families. And you'll also see in Daniel when Gabriel is fighting and he's fighting with the prince of Persia. Then he say, I will go and I'll fight with the prince of Greece and no one help me but your prince Michael. So these are not people that are fighting. These are beings that are over these nations according to what we read in the scriptures, right? So if wisdom has builded her a house and she has heard her seven pillars and then you go to Zechariah and it's clearly telling you that these are not just seven eyes. These are watchers who go to and fro and divine beings, if you will, however you want to look at it, right? It's not seven people going across the earth, right? So if we're taking things, just what is what is what is written here, right? It's not trying to uh, just uh, put seven days and throw stuff together. Wisdom with her seven pillars, she building her house, and then it talks about these seven spirits. You also see these same seven spirits in Isaiah eleven chapter one, when it says about King David, who is the Messiah to return. It said a shoot was spring from the stock of Jesse and on him will rest the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of insight, the spirit of this. And it goes on name these seven spirits. Right. So it's not far fetched if people actually read and study the scriptures. Right. But because most of our people are in Christianity and they don't see the scriptures for what they say, you can explain away anything if you haven't really studied studied it and you was even admitting and saying certain things like oh okay that's interesting i'm seeing a different take right you, you, you're showing something different uh let, let me see what all y'all got bring it out let, let me see why y'all are coming with this instead of trying to just uh go against it see why we're coming with this right and we'll throw you everything we got and then you take it and run with it to do whatever you will with it but some people are hearing this for the very first time and that's why when I, when we bring out stuff and we have these conversations, it's good to bring it all out so people can not make a rash decision right now or discredit something to throw it away because it don't fit with their narrative they've been given or, or, or bought on to, right? So, cause you don't know what somebody been studying. You ain't studied everything. You don't know everything. I ain't studied everything and I don't know everything. So if somebody bring out something that I'm not very familiar with their stance, I would want to hear it out, especially all the way. I say, give me all you got on wisdom, why y'all come to this decision and why y'all think that this is um, what it is, right? So therefore, I can go back and research it myself and make a collective decision based on all the, the information I've accumulated in this conversation. And we may have to have more than one conversation to get it, right? So when I read right here, the most high, uh, this is Isaiah, it said, Isaiah 63 and 10, it says, but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Then he became their enemy and waged war on himself. So you'll see that the Most High does have a Holy Spirit. And it is the Ruach, the Chakma. When you get to the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is now a Holy Ghost. And it's no longer the feminine, a she. It is a he. So a change has been made. And that's what most of our people, most of the Christians you deal with divine and everybody else, like the God just got you saying that Jesus is Yahweh and all of these things. And he that light in the beginning and he that us and he these things. So by us giving a different uh, take on it, because we don't believe in the New Testament and we only read from the Tanakh and, and what it says, uh, there are a few scriptures that talk about uh, the Holy Spirit. And how Yah used his Holy Spirit. And it says, where was he who put his Holy Spirit among them? Where is he who saved them from the sea, the shepherd of his flock? And then when you go through Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, let me read this so I can just round it up and, and say where this come from. Rather, uh, so people can know. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 says, it was wisdom who protected the first man to be fashioned, the father of the world. Who had been created alone she it was who rescued him from his fall and gave him the strength to subjugate all things but when in his wrath the wicked man deserted her he perished in his prediction of fury when because of him the earth was drowned it was wisdom who saved it piloting the upright man on valueless timber again 
when concurring the wickedness the nations had been thrown into confusion she singled out the upright man preserved him blameless before yah and fortified him against pity for his child she it was while the godless perished saved the upright man and as he fled from the fire raining down on the five cities and witness against whose evil ways a desolate land still smokes where plants bear fruit that never ripen and were monuments to an unbelieving soul. There stands a pillar of salt. For by ignoring the path of wisdom, not only did they suffer the loss of not knowing the good, but they left the world a memorial to their folly. But wisdom delivered the servants from their ordeal. The upright man fleeing from the anger oh of his brother God, was led man. by her along a straight path. She showed him the kingdom of Yah and taught him the knowledge of the holy things. She bought him success in his labors and gave him full return for all his efforts. She stood by him against grasping and oppressive men, and she made him wealthy. She preserved him from his enemies and saved him from the traps they set for him. And in ardent struggle, she awarded him the prize to teach him that piety is stronger than all. She did not forsake the upright man when he was sold, but snatched him away from sin and accompanied him down into the pit. Nor did she abandon him in his chains until she had bought him the scepter of a kingdom and authority over his despotic masters, thus exposing as liars those who had traduced him and giving him honor everlasting. It was wisdom who delivered a holy people a blameless race from a nation of oppressors. She entered the soul of a servant of Yah and forstood fearsome kings and wonders and signs. To the holy people, she gave the wages of their labors. She guided them by a marvelous road. She, her shelter by day and their starlight through the night, that angel that's following them through the clouds, whatever you spirit, whatever you will. She brought them across the Red Sea, leading them through an immensity of water where their enemies were drowned and sped out. So the upright despoiled the godless and Yah, they extolled your holy name and with one accord praised your protecting hand. For with dumb, it made eloquent the tongues of babes. Ecclesiasticus 1. All wisdom comes from Yah. She is with him forever. The sands of the sea, the drops of the rain, who can count them? The height of the sky, the breadth of the earth, the depth of the abyss, who can explore them? Wisdom was created before everything. Prudent understanding. For whom has the root of wisdom ever been uncovered? Her resourceful ways, who knows them? Only one who is wise, terrible indeed, seated on his throne, Yah. It was he who created her, inspected and weighed her up, then poured her out on his works. As much to each living creature as he chose, bestowing her on those who love him. The fear of Yah is the pride, happiness and gladness. The fear of Yah gladdens the heart. For those who fear Yah, all will end well. And then Baruch chapter 4, 4. She is the book of the commandments. Those who keep her shall die. Those who reject her, uh, who keep her shall live. And those who reject her shall die. So it's many, many more. I'm just going to stop with that. Okay. Um, wow. That was a lot. Um, and I, I appreciate you. <laughs> no, it's all good. I mean, I'm familiar with all of that, right? Um, so I appreciate you reiterating it for me. Um, and I'm assuming that these are kind of points that you're using to prove your point in regards to Proverbs chapter eight. It's interesting that you're reading from the wisdom of Solomon. Um, the wisdom of Solomon is found in what collection of books? Hello. Hello. Are you talking about the Apocrypha? No. The Wisdom of Solomon is found in what collection of books? Okay. So um, it's actually found in the Septuagint, um, the extent form that's found in Christian codices of the 4th century AD. How can you trust reading from the Wisdom of Solomon if the only source of it that we have today uh, isn't a Christian book in Greek. Okay. 
And you do, can go do you research read the it while we're quiet. Do you, do you read the New Testament, brother? Yeah, I read it in Syriac. Okay. You trust the New Testament, correct? I don't know what you mean when you say trust. Yeah, the same thing you meant by trust. I mean, the, uh, y'all don't y'all don't read the book of Job. Y'all don't trust that book. But, but, but I don't know about the books y'all don't trust. This is my Dude. point. This is my point. This is my point, brother. Okay, the New Testament is is was written in Greek. You understand what I'm saying? So was the, the wisdom Tanakh, of Solomon that you have in the Septuagint. But give me out. Give me out. The Tanakh was translated from the Hebrew to the Greek. You get what I'm saying? That's where you get your Septuagint from. So you trust the book that was written by and you the trust the book that was people. translated in Greek in a language but, that but you all out. You, you, you trust the book. You trust the book <laughs> that was written by the most wicked people who've ever been on the earth. Nah, no, I don't. And you can you can make that statement all you want, but you can't prove that. Well, I said I, I, read, I said I read Greek. I said I read it in a Syriac. So you told me who wrote that. I'll wait. Well, I'm just saying that you trust in a book that's written by the most wicked people. It's on written earth. in Syriac. So you tell me who the people that wrote it in Syriac in the old Syriac Sinaiticus Palmacist that I read. You tell me who wrote that. The New Testament wasn't written in Greek. I'm going to say it again. I read the old Syriac Sinaiticus Palmacist or the OSS. It, it was written in, what, slow down, brother. It was written in Syriac, which is a dialect of Aramaic. Was, was tell me Testament who the wicked people who wrote that. No, just tell me who the wicked people were that wrote that. Your Greeks. Your Antiochus Epiphany. The Greeks. Epiphany, the Greeks, the Greeks they, they did not wrote write that. the OSS. What are you, they, they, what are you they talking wrote the about, new, brother? They were responsible for the new Testament. Wow, this is crazy. Divine, are you saying then that the uh, Syriac is different than the Greek? Yes, you don't know that Syriac is a different language. Syriac language. is a sister language, language. language listen, listen, to listen Hebrew. To no, 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 no. I understand. I'm not saying language. I mean, the uh, the uh, central character and the central figures are they different? The central figures are very similar. It's so, so then, because I, I don't really, I've never talked to you, but I, I want to get a little little understanding. So, are you saying then that the uh, Christ of the New Testament is is he God? He's God in a sense, the same way that David was God, <laughs> that Shalomo was God. Hold on. You asked me a question. I'm answering your question. He's God in a sense that Shalomo or Solomon was God, David or David was God. He's God in that sense. He's not God in that he's the father, Yahweh. That's not my position. And the pedigree that I go back to, you know, the <laughs> authors of the Syriac text that I'm asking Sarah to tell me who wrote, they didn't subscribe to that either. That's what I'm asking. So, so you don't believe that the Christ of the New Testament is actually uh, Yah, the Father? No, I don't subscribe to that. I just I said that, my brother. I don't know if you. Yeah, yeah you did. I, I'm just clarification. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, sir. You take offense. Yes, correct. Why, why do you take offense to uh, follow up? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not offended. I just want to. I just want to see where we're like getting. At what point are you trying to make? I, I affirmed it. Yeah, no, yes. no, the point is the point I'm trying to make is that the, the writers in the Greek Testament. I mean, a lot of a lot of your Christian brothers will say that you are Christian beautiful. brothers. I'm not a Christian brother. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I, I said, I said, I didn't say you were a Christian. You said my said Christian you, brothers. Who are my Christian brothers? Who are they? The ones who believe that the Christ of the New Testament is God. Then that's their problem. Based I mean, on the, based on the Greek, mm -hmm. based on the based on the New Testament. But that has nothing to do with me. So why do you keep diverting and 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 dressing I'm not a straw diverting. man? I'm not no, diverting. brother, I'm listen. Trying get, I'm trying to get a. I'm trying to get understand where you're coming from. So understand me. I'm going to say it again. I subscribe to the old Syriac Sinaiticus Palmacess. That's what I affirm, and that's what I subscribe to. So if you're referring to a Greek, hold on, brother. Listen, if you're referring to a Greek text, you're talking to the wrong person. No, 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 no. I, I wanted to say, I wanted to say, but they have the same story. They have the same story. The Septuagint has the same story as the Tanakh, but there are differences between those manuscripts as well. They're not a, a, a direct translation of the Tanakh. No, I said, does your manuscript, the Syriac uh, New Testament, <laughs> does it have the same story as the Greek New Testament? I said yes. They are similar. I, I already said that. Say yes. But there yeah, are there are textual variants. Hold on, there are textual variants in it that will ups, it. that upsets those who subscribe to the Greek text because it deviates away that is not beholden to the orthodox position in Christianity. Now, I'm, I know that y'all are not aware of anything that I'm saying right now, and that's fine. Y'all brought it here. I wasn't even talking about this. I Can wanted I to get back to what I was talking no, no, about. No, no, you brought it there. Can no, I, I, didn't bring, I didn't bring it to Christianity or New Testament. Y'all did. I, I was still in Tanakh. 
I just want to bring something out about this week, okay? <laughs> I'm in Maccabees 1, verse 7. Another so text reading Greek. Rain, Exactly, okay, exactly. Okay. But here's what, the, here what the Greeks say about themselves. <laughs> so Alexander reigned 12 years, and then he died. And his oh, servants man. bear rule everyone in his place, verse 9. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. So these are the people who are giving you the book that you trust in. <laughs> Well, that was not. yo. That was a he stretch. Armstrong oh, reach. So wait. So wait. So wait. The Maccabees, right? Which was going on. Y'all, y'all follow this, right? In the second century BCE, they wrote a text in the first century CE. This is incredible. I didn't know they lived to be hundreds of years old. Can y'all tell me how was that possible? I thought Yah said that he was spirit would not strive with man for 120 years, yet they lived several hundred years to write the New Testament. Man, I got to give y'all a round of applause for that. Y'all elders got it locked down. I appreciate that. This is nuts. This is crazy. Thank you. I appreciate that, brother. This is wild. Um, and I'm just going light. So look, let me get, I was trying to get back to the Tanakh, right? And let's not, let's not get away from the Tanakh. Um, so I, what I want to say is this, right? What you'll see in literature, right? We call them scriptures, but the Tanakh is literature. Torah is literature. Literature is a genre of writing that's found amongst the ancient Near East. Every culture had their own pieces of literature and subscribed to their literature. Some of them beheld them sacred like we do. Some of them did not. In literature, there are genres in literature. In those genres of literature, there are literary devices that's used to explain narratives, stories, thoughts, ideologies, etc. One of those things is called personification. When you analyze what we call the book of Proverbs, we see other texts in the ancient Near East that are very similar, such as the instruction of Amenemope. Are you familiar with the instruction of Amenemope? Sar, Michael, Sage, True Israel, Oida. Do y'all know what that is? You, you, you got a bunch of useless information. Look at this. You see this? You see this? Look at this. <laughs> All of this information here is useless. It's useless. That's, you this is hilarious. To, you try to sound smart, but you sound dumb. Try to sound smart? No, I don't try you to sound smart. To, I am smart, my brother. So maybe them. maybe you need to stop doing the ad hominems and just deal with the information. Right. No, no, so, no, no, no. So, but you're asking, you're asking all these questions. Here's you're right. Thing, they they, they you are never, relevant. You never, you never, but no, but you never addressed sage, sages. Uh, yes, I did. I answered a question. I gave her Job chapter 38 and verse four to seven. She discredited Ooh. it. She glossed over it and she dismissed it and said it's not canonical it's to it. her. So, so she said, moved. Go ahead, brother. This is crazy. But you said, you said, so the us are the sons of God, right? That's what I said. And so, I answered and, and the question. Saying, so, but. By saying that, that us as the sons of God, you are dim- dismissing that wisdom was there, right? Wisdom is a personification, and the reason that's what you say. Hold no, on, you know, because I can take anything. Yeah. Like when when it says JC is the rock, that's personification. That's not right? personification. No, it's not. Okay, that's okay, called okay, figurative. No. Hold on, that's a figurative not, language. That that's another. Wait, listen, listen. You have metaphors and similes. Personification and contains. Okay, go ahead. Verbally. If hyperbole, you have a lot of. I'm not talking words. about hyperboles. You didn't hear me say no, that. No, say, hyperbole no, 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 is an said, exaggeration. Said, wow. Listen, I didn't, that's not what I said, though. You, you, you like to interrupt. I think you like to hear yourself speak. No, I don't. I, saying, I, though, I like to finish my thought before I'm interrupted. No, no, I, but I was speaking then when you interrupted. Wow. I said, okay. I was, that's all I was saying. I just said this. I said that you were claiming, I think that you're saying that wisdom was not there, right? You're saying that, that it was the sons of, of God, right? And 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 I think and I think what you're implying is that, that must be male. Is is that male? Are they just males? Okay, so I said that the Bene Elohim were there during creation. Okay, they're not males because male were required to you to have genitalia. These entities do not have genitalia, so they cannot be Anyone males. Hokma does not have genitalia, so she cannot be a female. El does not have any genitalia, so you cannot be a male either. So it anything be- you hear, anything you hear is anthropomorphism. Hold on. This is another literary device. These are not males and females up there. Okay, unless you believe that. 
Maybe you believe no, no. that him and Hokma got it in and they had these children and that's why they called the children of Yah, no. sons of Yah. Maybe that's what y'all believe. I don't know. Nobody said that except you. That's in your mind. That's no, that's not in my mind, brother. No. You said, are they said. male? I said, no. No, they're not male. No, I said, I said, but it still could be wisdom then, right? No. 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 <laughs> what no. You, why not? No, it cannot be wisdom. Why not? Because it's why, personification. Why if you don't know what personification but is, brother, it's not meant no, to be no, no, taken no, no. literally. And what it means. Oh, my God. But what I'm saying, though, yeah. is you're saying, though, that these beings have no genitalia, right? That's what you're saying. They're beings. That's They're exactly beings. what I said, brother. Yes. Okay, then. So then, then couldn't, couldn't a being be wisdom? No. Where's that at? Why not? Because this, the text that you're sourcing it from is using personification as literary language to express but a still, point. Though, the attributes, because, the no, attributes no. could be wisdom, though, right? Yes, brother. But when you read Proverbs as That's a whole, I wanted you to say, you, see, wow. you admitted it. Could be there. And you and you cut me off. You see, but go ahead, go ahead. You got it. It's not no, no, my. Go ahead. So I'm go. sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. But I thought you just agreed to me to agree with me. Okay, brother. Listen said, to yes. me. Listen to me. Right. We have something called a dichotomy that's taking place in the Book of Proverbs. Okay. And that's very important that you understand that dichotomy. When I went to Proverbs chapter nine, I showed you what the dichotomy was. Matter of fact, read the entire chapter of Proverbs chapter nine, and you will see a dichotomy. This dichotomy is a parallelism that's found all throughout the book of uh, Proverbs. And if you want me to give you the places in particular, I can outline all of that for you. This is why I read the verse that I read in Proverbs chapter nine, because I want to show you dichotomy and parallelisms, because all this will show you the type of language that's being used in order to express wisdom. Wisdom is an idea. It is not tangible. It is not an entity that is physically walking around somewhere in the ethereal realm. That's not there. Okay. That is not the intention of the author. Because when you read Proverbs chapter one, the author tells you what his intention is. It's not even Yah speaking in Proverbs eight. Okay. So, so we have a lot of things going on here in the book of Proverbs by itself. And the problem is that because we have not been trained to study this type of genre, it goes over our head or under our radar. And it happens sometimes, and that's fine. So, so then you, so you don't believe that Christ was there in the beginning? No, I Jesus do not. I never said that. That's not my affirmation, brother. No, no, no I'm not. I'm just asking. Okay, I'm answering. No, I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm not accusing you of anything. I got I'm you, brother. Asking. I said no. So, so you don't then you don't believe that he is he's even in the uh, uh, Tanakh, the New Testament. No, I never said that either. No. So he's not. He, you don't. He's not established in the New Testament. I don't know what that means. We mean he's not established in the New Testament. You can't find him in the New Testament. That's you can't what find who in the New Testament? Christ of the New Testament. You can't find Christ of the New Testament in the New Testament. You're, you're, you're a savior. You're Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. You said I can't. It's find not Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I never made that proclamation. No, I'm I don't know where you get that you, from. Bro. No, 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 I'm, I'm no just, he's not. No, he's not. Okay, I'm just asking. No problem. So, so why don't you allow me to explain so to you what my position so, is? Because you're going to ask me a million questions then. And then I have to ask you a million back, if you don't mind. Yeah, I I don't mind. Okay. So I ask you, why do you trust the wisdom of Solomon when it's written in Greek and it's in the Septuagint of New Testament Bibles? Why do you subscribe to that? Why are you reading that? How come the same conspiracy can't be there from the Maccabeans who the Greeks supposedly wrote the New Testament? They probably wrote the wisdom of Solomon because that's found in Christian books. The Pentateuch was written in the third and the second century, not the Septuagint. Because it comports to the Tanakh. Because what? It comports to the Tanakh. So because it comports to the Tanakh, Tanakh, and this is perceived. I think you're ideating this, but it's fine. This is perceived. But but that's what we all do. We ideate things, right? Yeah, but I'm not doing that right now. I'm going based on evidential. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not at all. I'm not ideating anything. Right? You believe that the Christ (laughs) is, is special. That's just your idea, right? How do you know? I never said any of that. No, no, you said this I'm is just, your idea, I'm, right? I never said I'm, that I'm, to I'm, begin with that lead on I'm question. Just from your answers, though. I'm just but what from answers? Your... What did I tell you to give you that idea? You said you accept the New Testament. That's what you I said. I said the OSS, more particularly the Sefer of Metayahu, is what I subscribe to. English, dude. Speak English. We're English here. We're English speakers. Speaking English speech, but you got Hebrew names. Okay, so look. All right, so you want me to speak English? Hebrew. That's true, Hebrew. You said what? 
I was true Hebrew. How's my name Hebrew? Your name is not Israel. You don't have Israel there. It says true Israel. That's what I see. I see Shay Yasharal. Hold on. I see Shay. I see Mikhail Black. I see Sar Waria. I see all Hebrew names. I'm confused. Maybe I'm in the wrong room. I told um, you I don't speak English. You don't speak I mean, English? I don't speak, I don't speak Hebrew. I just told you that. Okay, brother. All right. If you don't speak Hebrew, you want me to remove Hebrew out of the equation, right? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. I want you to, when you say things, I want you to speak, say English, speak things in English. Give us English. That, that's what I'm saying. Do you want me to remove Hebrew out the equation and just speak in English? <laughs> you, can, you can keep your Hebrew. I just want you to speak it in English when you're, okay, brother. When you're translating. No problem. no problem. Okay. So I'll slow down. I apologize if I'm getting out of order or getting beside myself. That's not my intention, right? You see, when Sister Sage spoke the last time, she spoke and said a whole bunch of scriptures. I didn't interrupt at all. I began to speak. People cut and asked me questions. When I simply asked them a question, that is not being answered. So to answer your question, brother, I said the book of Matthew, okay, of the OSS is what I subscribe to, okay? And because the reason why I subscribe to that is because the Evianites and the Nazarenes have that book. The translation in Greek that you are talking about, I'm going to read for you what Jerome says. You know who Jerome is, correct? Church yes, Father Jerome? Okay. Mm -hmm. What does he say about the Greek translation? Uh, I believe he said it was garbage, but uh, you, you, you tell us. I think he said it was garbage or? Okay. Let me, let me, let me pull it up for you, okay? I'm going to put up a, a good source for you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. All right. Um, let me get it for you. And for anybody that's interested in this subject matter that I'm talking about, you're going to put a, a nice little source for y'all. i got two sources. Um, if you want to go and actually do some real research and not be speculative. Um, the first one is called The Gospel According to the Hebrews and the Gospel of the Ebionites. That's what I subscribe to. Uh, this book is edited by Andrew Gregory and is published by Oxford, all right, in the Oxford Early Christian Gospel Text Series, okay? The other one is called The Original Gospels, an English translation from the Old Syriac Manuscripts by Mark A. Dumdai, okay? These are just two books you can grab off of uh, Amazon. Now, the other stuff that I use, the actual OSS, um, I have actual microfiche of that. That you got to pay about $3,000 to get, right, um, because you can't just get that off of Amazon, so you can read it yourself. And then it requires you to understand some Syriac to make your way through it, which is easy if you learn some Hebrew because they're sister languages, right? So that is the text that I subscribe to, right? I just want to make sure we understand that. So I'm going to read from that text, right? I just want to make sure we understand. The Ebionites and the Nazarenes, right? These individuals had what's called the gospel according to the Hebrews or the gospel according to the Nazarenes or the gospel, a Hebrew gospel of Matthew, right? This is not the same thing as the Greek New Testament. And this is very important, my brother, that you understand this, right? So you, you probably have never gone down this path before, and it's okay. And I just want to share this with you so that way when you have conversations with people who subscribe to what is called the New Testament, you can treat them as individuals, right? Because everybody does not hold the same position, right? So they were what's called by academia Jewish Christians. They were coined by the Anti-Nicene Church Fathers as so-called Jewish Christians, and they wound up calling them heretics, okay? So they were not part of Orthodox Christianity, okay? These individuals had certain beliefs that are starkly in contrast to Orthodox Christians. One of them is that they did not subscribe to no virgin birth. That's very important because when you read Matthew chapter 1, in the Old Syriac Sinaiticus, you'll see that there is no virgin birth there. That's a big deal, right? Because from what you know from Greek manuscripts, the translations from that, there's a virgin birth, right? Yes, sir? Just want to make sure yes. we're having a dialogue. Okay, cool. All right. But are you aware that in OSS there's no virgin birth there? Uh, no, I, di I didn't, but uh, keep going. Okay. And then if you go into the narrative in Matthew chapter 28, right? You don't see anything talking heavily about what. But, uh, but Mark, of... hold, on, hold on, real quick. Mark is is older than Matthew, right? And Mark don't have a virgin birth. All right, so you're Matthew, going by what's called they, the Markian. They, they put they put the virgin birth in, in later. Okay. okay, and that's fine. Mark don't got no virgin birth, so okay. and that's hey, fine. Hey, but you know, what you no, they, they they're, they're not, not going to. They're not going to. It, it um, kills what you're saying, though. How it kills what I'm saying? Well, what you're saying agrees with what I'm saying. This is crazy. All right, so look. The virgin birth was introduced later. 
brother. Because Mark Mark goes before Matthew. It's, okay. It's, 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 it's so so if I if I ask you why does Mark come before Matthew, you tell me what the theory is. It's an early attack. It's that's early. not that's oh, not the theory. Actually, Explain the actually, theory, brother. Paul. Explain the theory. Paul, okay, go ahead. Paul, Paul should go before all the gospels. Paul Which, is setting up the he's setting up the alley oop for the gospel. So he should really be first. Mm, before no. you get to Matthew. That's that's not the case. Paul, because he wasn't an eyewitness Paul, to. Yeah, he said Paul. Paul was before the gospel. That's what he said. Did you say I, Salakia? Wow. That's what the brother said. He says Salakia. That mean you know what Salakia means? Uh, no, like I don't. Pardon. But, uh, pardon. Means pardon. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's go. what I'm saying. But I, okay. I, I'm just saying I hear a lot of the guys in the camp say. That's yeah. Salakia. Well, that's that, yeah. That's what he said. I mean, so all right. So camp, camp. no, I'm not. A, I'm not a camp, right? And if he is a camp, then I don't see nothing no, wrong with that either. And how that has anything I don't to do with I'm the just, I'm making a statement, dude. I'm not a camp either, brother. making a statement. Okay, brother. Yes, brother. Okay, let me let me finish, right? Let me finish. All right. So what I'm saying is this, right? And um okay, so so I asked you, Saw Warrior, because you jumped in and I asked you, explain to us the Markian priority theory. What is that? You have a few seconds if you need to um Google it, but then I'm gonna ask you some more intimate questions about it to see if you actually understand mechanically how that theory was put together and why. Because if you don't understand it, you can't just throw that out it's, there, it's, right? Because I'm going to test that. It, 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 is it's a a it is a theory. It is a theory. Okay, so give me, show me the, show me, sense. give me a source that says that's the consensus. Because look, it's not a theory. The scholars, the scholars generally. Who? Agree. Name a scholar. Mark. Michael J. Kruger. You look it up. John H. Fox. No, no, no I'm, I'm giving you the scholars. Dan gonna, Wallace. I'm not gonna, right. Whatever. Uh, you said you, whatever. You, 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 you this is your theory, right? Then you know it's not consensus. This is crazy, man. All you, right. You gave him some scholars. What are you doing? Yeah, I gave scholars, scholars, but he's saying scholars so general. Knows, he can't name one that. scholar. I don't need to. Matter, you name them for me. They exist. You know they exist, though. What, what? Exactly. <laughs> I know them. scholars <laughs> exist, but those are not the ones that's talking about what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what, you this is crazy. You lied. Oh right. man, no, I did not lie, and you're bearing false witness right now. No, no, no. I'm saying, but you, but you were saying that they, they. You were trying to imply that these these agreed with them. I didn't imply anything. Where did you get that supposition from? Said, what I'm did I say? You, you said I'm giving you some scholars. No, he, I, he said that. scholars say, and I said which scholars, and I just started naming random scholars. How was that lying? He said well, I don't know. Like you they, look it up. It sounded like you were saying they, they were agree with them. Them. Yeah, they all agree with me. That's no, they did. Okay, sh show me where they agree with you. Show me. Show me what John H. Walton agrees with you. Show me. No, you show us. No, I can't show you that. I guess he doesn't. All right, so let me. So I'm going to speak then. I'm going to speak then. All right, I'm going to speak then. That was true. You said, you said what? You're appealing to your scholarship and not what's true. I'm appealing to my scholarship. Let me, yeah, ask you, I, let me ask you I really, a question. I really admit you know more about this than I do, but it doesn't mean hold you're on, right. Hold on, brother. It, well, it yeah, doesn't mean you're right either. So let me say I know, this, I know, right? Keep going. No, okay. So, so, going. so let me, and now I'm going to ask you a question, right? Um, so do you, do, you have a, do you have a PhD in theology? Uh, no, Just I don't. Curious. Okay. Sar, do you have a PhD in theology? No, I don't have a PhD. In you, you, I don't have a PhD. What are y'all saying? I'm just asking a yes or no question. Give me out. Give me out. But neither did the guy you worship. He didn't have a PhD in theology. Let me just answer real quick. I don't have a PhD in indoctrination. I don't. That's what a PhD represents. That's interesting. Uh, I mean, you are a master of getting the, indoctrinated. The translation you got from the Hebrew is by PhDs. That's fascinating. You have PhD. Okay. Yes, I do. yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, look at look yeah, at my thing. But that's but that's no, no. But the reason why I'm asking that is because you're if Christ, you're saying you're Christ that you worship didn't have a PhD, I don't okay. understand what you mean. I don't know what you're talking about. That's that has nothing to no, do with anything. No, you brought it up. Not me. Yeah, and, and if you and if you let me tell you why I brought it up, then you would understand why I asked that. Right. The reason why I asked you that is because PhDs will not say openly what was just said and said that it's not a theory. That's what I'm saying. They're not going to say it's not a theory. It is a theory. It's the prevailing theory at the moment. It's not even a full yeah. consensus because the early church fathers disagree with that notion. I just want you to keep going. About so if you can show me an early church father, anti Nicene church father that says that the book of Mark comes before Matthew, I would love to see it because they I don't say that. They say Matthew comes I first. Bet this is long, I bet this is long to high as hell. 
No, everything's paid off, brother. <laughs> I make good money, right, in IT. And I teach the youth how to get off of the street and how they can make money in IT as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I don't have no student also. loans, brother. Yeah, I, I was in IT also. Yeah, I don't have no student loans. I'm sorry. You got the wrong person again. But I do have some Jubilee May Mission services in case you <laughs> or somebody you know has loans. All right, so let's, let's move on. All right, so uh, going with the marketing priority, right? The marketing priority is something that is a recent invention, okay? And it is a presupposition based on analyzing portions of the New Testament text, okay? It's called the Markian priority, okay? So what does that mean? Well, Mark is the shortest gospel, right? Matthew is the second, Luke is the longest. And what you get in John, in John is mostly a diatribe. You don't get a lot of narrative there, right? That's not part of the synoptic gospels. In Mark, because it is the shortest, right? It's written in more crude Greek. Matthew is a little bit more refined. And Luke is extremely refined as a Greek writing. The places where you see the events mentioned in Mark, some of those events are also mentioned in Matthew, and some of them are also mentioned in Luke. Okay? Then you have events that are only mentioned in Mark and Matthew. Then you have events that are only mentioned in Mark and Luke. And then you have events that are mentioned in Matthew and Luke that's not in Mark. The reason why they say that the Markian priority is the current prevailing theory is because, number one, it is the shortest. So there are various terms for that. Brevior is one of them, and that just means brief or short. And typically, the text that has the shortest writing, even amongst textual variants, is typically the most original because it is very rare that you see a scribe that will simply add something as opposed to leaving it out if they're writing a text that they deem to be sacred. And we see this style of writing not just with the Bible in the Tanakh, but also in ancient and recent writings, okay? So that is a principle that's used to apply because Mark is the shortest written gospel. It is an accrued of Greek. And the places that we see in which Matthew and Luke have the same stories, Mark is written in a similar Greek. If it's written in a similar Greek and Mark is a crude Greek and we see Luke as a more refined Greek, that means that those two other gospels built off of what is written in Mark. This is the prevailing theory, okay? This is what I'm saying, theory, okay? They don't say it's definitive. It's not absolute. It's a theory, all right? Because it goes against all the litany of eyewitness testimonies <clears throat> that was written in the first century all the way up to the fourth century that says that Matthew was written before Mark. So that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a theory, okay? Now, also, there are also elements or what we call terms, certain words that are used in Mark that we do find in Matthew and Luke as well. Matthew is second longest after Mark, and then Luke is the final or the longest of both of them almost put together, right? Matthew is very interesting because you have a lot of Aramaisms in Matthew that you don't find in Mark and that you don't find in Luke. Aramaisms are idioms, parallelisms, or other literary devices that shared in Hebrew literature. And the reason for that, because that typically denotes that it's a particular recipient audience that the message is being said to, hence why it's written in that format. When you get to Luke, Luke is written much different. There's little to no Aramaeans in there unless it is building off of what is written already in Matthew, which means that Luke also borrowed from Matthew. Because if Luke, who again is proposed to be the author of the text, is the individual that actually wrote it, he was not an eyewitness to any event. He's not a secondary witness to any events. He is a tertiary witness to everything that's being written prior in Matthew and in Mark. Okay? So when we're going to look at the exhibition of what we find in Mark to make it determine that Mark came first, you cannot go on this based off of the anti-Nicene church fathers because all of them disagree with that notion. You go on based on a 21st century ideation Right, because that's where it stems from a problem question before you get to your thesis, and then you go through your whole entire methodological process in between. You get to your hypothesis, which was the prevailing theory. Are the church fathers correct in saying that Matthew came before Mark, or Mark actually came after Matthew? What data do we currently have that we can source from in order to come up with this hypothesis, the thesis before our final thesis? And then when they get to their final thesis, which again is a theory that was proposed by two various authors, okay? And then everybody started to take wind of that. When it got to that point, they're still saying it is a theory because it requires more data. It's not absolute. 
Okay, so, okay, we'll get so it. now that I'm done with that, let me let me move that aside, right? So I'm just trying to trying to give some information. I'm I'm going to move that aside, and I want to get back to the Tanakh. I don't know why y'all keep going to the New Testament. Y'all like the New Testament more than me because y'all going there. I'm trying to stick in the Tanakh. So in the Tanakh, what I'm saying is the wisdom of Solomon is not in the Tanakh. The Tanakh. Okay, hold I want to know more about the Ancients first. What what, what the, their philosophy was? Their philosophy. Yeah, we, you were talking about that, and you you sort of got tra- sidetracked. You wanted to uh, show us your knowledge of the. Uh, no, I was just Martin, telling you. I wasn't. Martin. I wasn't sidetracking. I was telling you, and no, I gave no, no, you. No, 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 but you got, I you gave you one tenant that they subscribed to, and I said they did not subscribe to the virgin birth. I said that to you. I gave you a tenant that is critical and crucial to Orthodox Christianity, and they did not subscribe to it. And it is not reflected in OSS, which, according to Arthur Vubis, goes back to the teachings of the Nazarenes and the Ebionites who made their way to what we call modern day Syria. So so you reject then the virgin birth, right? Yes, because it's not in OSS. you, you, You reject the divinity of Christ, right? No, he was divine by way of the spirit. As we see in Matthew chapter three and something called adoptionism, which, again, is considered heresy in Orthodox Christianity. But you, so you, are you saying that he made an atonement for Israel? He was martyred for Israel. Did he make an atonement? Did he die for the sins of Israel? He was martyred for Israel. So what does a martyr do? So let me give you an example, right? Let me give you an example, right? No, 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 hold on. Let me give you, I'm going to give you an example because I actually, what a martyr is, you didn't give me definition. So I'm going to give you an example. Okay. So I'm going to say again, if you were a person in the streets, yeah, and you out there gangbanging, do all types of crazy stuff. And I'm a friend of yours who's not in the streets. And I'm calling and telling you, hey, brother, hey, you need to get back on track because your life ain't going well. You got a, you got a wife. You got kids. You're still hanging out in the streets. You're still selling drugs. You still do all this stuff. And I'm trying to warn you away from that lifestyle. You decide that you're going to continue to do that lifestyle. So then one day, let's say a, 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 an op comes to try and smoke you, right? try to drill you. And then I'm there. And in the process of that happening, I jump in the way and I take the bullet for you. You're going to be like, oh, you're going to say in your mind, I have more to lose than my my, my friend has more to lose than I did. But yet he jumps in the way and takes a bullet for me because all the while he was preaching to me, right? He was telling me, get my life together, get my life together. It wasn't until he took that bullet for me that it changed my life. He martyred himself for my benefit. And because he did that, I realized I got this close to death. But instead of it killing me, it killed my friend. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my mind right. I'm going to stay out of the streets. I'm going to family away from the streets. I'm going to do everything it takes to get my right. That's a martyr. That's what so, martyrs but, do. So wait, so wait. So I, so I answered your question. So now let's get, let's get reflective. So in regards to atoning for sins, we see in Ezekiel, Chapter one, that Ezekiel is a Navi, he's a prophet, and he's a Kohen, he's a priest. He was told in Ezekiel chapter four to bear the iniquity of Israel. How could he bear the iniquity of Israel? Well, that's what the priest does. Priests bear the iniquity of Israel in the ritualistic practices that they do for atonement for individuals. And we can see that in Leviticus chapter one to chapter six, if you want to go through the offerings. But I'm going to pause right there, and I'm going to simply say that a priest prophet can atone for the sins of another person. Die for their sins? Like I said, that concept that you have for dying for sins, you're getting that from Christian nomenclature. If you go to the Westminster Book of Theological Terms, right, which is one of the consensus in regards to that type of terminology, that's where you're sourcing that from. That's not where I'm getting it from. I'm getting it from historically from those groups that existed and how they taught that. So the way I teach things is going to be entirely different than anybody random that you find off the street who says they are Christian. Not really. Not really. But no, okay. So, I mean, okay. Not really. Okay. Cool. So you tell me. So you tell me why I'm called a heretic by Christians. I'm gonna wait and listen. Uh, because you don't believe that the Christ of the New Testament is divine. That's why you I, I just said he is well, divine. What are you talking about? I just no, did no, you no, hear me say adoptionism, brother, in Matthew God. chapter three. You don't believe that he's God or the Son of God. I said he. I do believe he's God. I do believe he's the Son of God. What are you talking about? You told me earlier you didn't believe he was God. I didn't believe that he is Yahweh. I said that he's God in the same way that David is called hey, God, God, the way that Solomon is called God, the way that the kings of Israel was believed to be God. Is, That's is my divine? position. Is he's he divine? divine by way of the Spirit. Yes. 
He's divine by way of the spirit. Same way that same way, same way that like David, same way that yeah. David had the spirit as well. And he's called the son in Psalms chapter one. He's adopted in Psalm 110. So it's the same way of him. His sons were Kohanim after him that we see in first Samuel chapter 18. Uh, section chapter 18 and verse Moses 8. Was we, God. We, yeah, Moses and, Ma- and yeah. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. He was made so you God that, for, for you Pharaoh. That, you said that Ezekiel, you said that he uh, made atonement for Israel, right? I said he bore the iniquity of Israel. He bore, right. Is that correct? Is, is there a difference in bearing the iniquity and making an atonement? Is there a difference? You tell me. When in no, Leviticus no, chapter 16, hold on. Okay, let's see. Wait, hold on. Okay. In Leviticus chapter 16, right? What does the high priest do? Uh, in Leviticus? Yes, sir. Leviticus chapter he, 16. Yeah, he's making an atonement. He is? In Le- Leviticus 16? Oh, that's fascinating. So uh, what's the difference between him making an atonement and him bearing the iniquity? But is it once and for all? That's my question. Once and for all for those who subscribe to that way. Yeah, so you that's that's, what, that's the point I'm trying to get to. Are you okay, saying then that correct? Mm-hmm. So you but but you were saying then that, that Christ of the New Testament was a final atonement, right? I said that he was martyred Actually, and through his hold on no. he, he was martyred. And because of that According to the uh, the uh, testimony of his adherents, that he was elevated where he now can be a mediator. It's no different than Metatron being a mediator, as we see in the Book of Enoch that you also eloquently subscribe to. Right, that's what was said earlier. You you subscribe to the Book of Enoch, right? Uh, uh, do you subscribe yeah, to the Book I'm, of Enoch? I've read the Book of Enoch. No, do you subscribe to it, brother? Subscribe is it canon movie. to you, brother? Sister yeah, Sage, yeah, she yeah. said it with her chest down. Yeah, she yeah, said, yeah. yes, I subscribe yeah, to it. I'm asking you, do you subscribe to it? I subscribe to all books. I you subscribe read the to all books? Answers. Oh, shit. Yeah, Even I, the ones I, that I teach idolatry? Yes, I read that New Testament. Cool. I read that okay, read cool. That. All right. But I asked a question, and y'all not answering the question. Do you subscribe to the book of Enoch, sir? Is that canon to you? I, sub- I just told you, I subscribe to all books. Is the book of Enoch not, equal to Torah Hannon, to you? Hear me out. Hear me okay, out. go ahead. They don't want to do it. Go ahead. Just, just hear me out. Canon just means indoctrinated. Because you're told these are the only books you're supposed to read. So that's the hey, point. I think that's a yes or no or suffice. That's, yeah, that's he's your not going to do it. But let's hear me out. Hear me out. That's your PhD is the indoctrination. My it's PhD, I could care less about that. A, what are you talking about? You, but you brought it up. I did. It's, it's, it's in my. It's in, right. Yeah. It's, so that. So, so when you have your PhD, you are the ultimate believer. What is my PhD in, in though? The, what is it in? What is it in? Being What's being my subject, subject, subject matter? Is it in? No, that's not. That's not my subject matter. That my PhD is in. Where are you getting it from? All right, cool. So you're, listen, you're, listen. You're, you're using your. You're using your wit. Right and your scholarship, my wits and scholarship. Okay, right. You to defend the sources is all the way off. Facts. Okay. Yeah, man. Wait, hold on. Using... Wait, hold on. Go Let next, governor. If if divine, you want to um, yield to governor because he want to speak after you. Sure. Or whatever. Yeah, I'm almost done. Yeah, I'm almost done. So yeah, I didn't I, want to speak. I just was well, addressing well, 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 it. Well, 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 what I'm saying, while they ain't talking, you can go next, and then you can say whatever you need to say. No, I want them to continue to build. I'm just addressing a point of moderation that I think that you yeah, guys but you should keep make cutting in. Up. But what I'm saying is that if I can get it off, this, I'm, I'm just talking. trying to you see if y'all next. can actually hold the brother to some integrity next. so he can answer the question. That's all. Okay, I'm and then you can go next if you want to speak. All right. Nice to see you again, Sister Sage. I don't know where you went. Did you go and start googling stuff? If you did, you are a smart sister. I know. No, you. no, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm messing with you. With I'm just, me- I'm just messing no, no, with you. No, no, I'm busy, but I'm, I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> I, I put some stuff in the chat too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. All right. I'm trying to get to the point that okay, you, you're just saying you're saying that uh, Christ of the New Testament is divine. He made himself divine. He I didn't say I didn't say he made himself divine. I never said that. Then how did he become divine? How did I he said become... I said through adoptionism. Are you familiar with Matthew chapter three? You know, um, oh, Sar yeah. said he reads everything. Maybe you don't read the New Testament. But um, if you go there right now and read Matthew chapter three, what what's happening there in Matthew chapter three? 
I, I don't know. I mean, tell okay, me what's gotcha. happening in Matthew chapter three. That's cool. Then let's get back to the point because I'm no, trying to that figure is, out. No, that is the point. So let me go and read it for you then. I'm, I'm, I'll yeah, just read it to, for you. I want you to read it. Sure. So we sure, get back to my you. point. I got you. Well, what, what was your point, brother? I, I was still in the Tanakh. Y'all in the New Testament. Listen, I didn't even come in here to talk the about the New Testament. Divine. Listen. You're telling me. I did not come here to talk about the New Testament. Y'all want me to talk about the but New I'm Testament. I'm trying to get to a point, though. I'm trying to get to a point in the Tanakh. That's what I'm trying to get back to. Wow. I'm trying to get back to a point in the Tanakh. Okay, but Go ahead and read Matthew. All right, brother. I, I'm going to read it for you, okay? So Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13. Matter of fact, I'm not going to... Do, do you want me to read the KJV? Because um, I could do that, or I could just read it from... It doesn't matter, guy. I no, mean... no, no, it does matter, because I want you to understand... When I say that I don't read, read from the, the Greek you, translation, read the book that you feel comfortable with. It's not what I feel comfortable with. It's one that can go back I say to the original. You, you said that. You, wow. okay. I didn't say that. You said it. All right. So I'm I'm just going to read this. Okay. So I'm going to read, and this is going to be Matthew chapter 13, right? And this is from uh, the Syrian Gospels. Now you don't want me to say no no Hebrew, right? So I'm assuming you don't want me to read it in Syriac either, correct? I want you to read it in English, guy. Okay, there we go. No, that's what I'm saying. All right. So yeah. I'm going to read this. This is from the translation of Mark A. Dumdi, right, and his team. It says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John, that he would baptize him in the Jordan. And John forbade him and told him, I need for you to baptize me, and you have come to me. Jesus answered and said to him, Allow it for now, since it is fitting that we should fulfill all justice in this way. Then he allowed him to be baptized. And when he was baptized and brought up from the water, behold, the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of God that descended in the likeness of a dove and it stayed upon him. And a voice was heard from heaven that said to him, you are my son and my beloved in you. I am delighted. So adoptionism, as you know, what adoption is, right, is when a person takes a child who is not their blood and they take them in as family. OK, here, adoptionism that we see the taking place in Matthew chapter three is this voice from heaven is adopting this individual and he's co-signing it with Yochanan and the Ruach that's right there as witnesses. This is adoption. Now, what's interesting is we also see that David said that he was adopted as well, right? He claims that he was adopted, that he was the son of Yah. Do you agree with that, correct? Was uh, David yes, adopted by Yah? Yes. Okay, got it. So that's what adoptionism is, right? So he received the Ruach or the spirit. And what you'll see is in the next chapter, he's tempted, right? Um, Baha Shatan. And then afterwards, he begins his work as a Navi, a prophet, as a teacher. And we see that in Matthew Yahoo chapter five. Okay. So that's adoptionism. Christians, Orthodox Christianity, right, teaches this is heresy because it is their subscription that Jesus is pre existent as God the Son. That means he was always divine even before he transitioned to Sardox or the flesh. Right? That's their position. That's what they teach. That's not my position. So that position that was held historically by the Eviadites is considered heresy by Orthodox Christianity. I am not considered a Christian to people you say are my brothers who are Christians. They do not consider me a Christian because what I just said to you is heresy. You reject the New Testament. It's heretical to them as well. So we're in the same boat. No, 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 I agree. Now, can I agree. we get back to the Tanakh, please? I mean, whenever you're ready to get back to the Tanakh, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, I wanted, that's what I want to do. Because now, okay, so you, uh, first of all, I was trying to establish whether or not you believe that the uh, Christ of the New Testament, then, and yeah, I think you told me that he, I think you told me this, that he died for the sins of Israel. I said he was Forever. martyred. He was well, martyred, brother, so that he can be an intermediary, similar to intermediaries that we see. Such as in the book of Enoch. Enoch was an intermediary. Yes, he was killed, brother, on a staros, which is an upright stake. He was killed. Okay, yeah, so he died. And and he did this for Israel, right? So he could make an atonement for Israel. I just said he did it as a martyr for Israel. And then he became a mediator posthumous after his death, right? So I'm a, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm so he's a, continuing. He, he's continually making intercession now for Israel. He's, he's always doing, he's doing a work. 
the same way that it is believed that Metodon is doing a work on behalf of Israel as a celestial scribe and an accountant. Are they, are they doing the same job or what? I mean, I no, they, they're not doing the same job. No. I mean, yeah, so wait, so wait, you, do you subscribe to the book of Enoch? See, you never answered my question. See, Sage holds that as canon, right? I don't know what your position is because I can I'll go out. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I read the book of Enoch and and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm still studying it. Wow. Okay. So that means you so don't I, hold it as canon, correct? It's uh, not, it's no, not God breathed to you, right? It's not Yah inspired, correct? I just started reading it. So, no, okay. no. It, it, not yet. All right, so but, but I'm, I'm asking, but you, but you subscribe to it, right? Subscribe to what the book of Enoch? Yeah, the book of Enoch is cool. I don't see it as canon, but it's very informative, and I, it I, does. I feel the same way you feel. I feel the same way you feel. No, but but what I'm saying is, I, I I read it, I studied it, and I wrote a paper on it, right? You keep and bringing up, you keep bringing up Met Metatron, though. Yeah, that's that's who he became. That's who Enoch became, right? In Jewish lore. All right. So let me, let me, uh, what I want to do, brother, is I want to meet you where you're at. And I don't want to speak about things that you're unfamiliar with because I see that as ambush scholarship and I don't think it's fair. So that's why I ask you, do you subscribe to it? All you got to do is say no, not at this moment. And I will just leave that text alone. I'm not going to use something. Right. I, I tell you, I feel, I feel the same way you do about it. Okay, cool. And then I ask you about the New Testament, Matthew chapter three. You're unfamiliar with it. So that means I don't even want to use that when talking to you, unless you want to, unless, no, unless you're okay you with me being, a, me being a junior, me being younger than you, teaching no. you something as my elder, right? If you're okay no, with that. No, I, I just, you, I thought you just read it because of what I want to do sure. is you, because what I'm trying to get to this, here's what I'm trying to get to, short, okay. short, um, short story. I'm trying to get to the point to where you, can you, can you establish then that for Israel, somebody, somebody was supposed to come and die for their sins. Uh, what, what, what is that at? You got a verse for that? No, 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 I don't. I, I, but that's the Christian. I mean, that's uh, them. But, but if I'm we're going to talk about it, we need a scripture. So maybe Sage or Sar can give you a scripture. What? what he just said. They don't have to be. They read the New Testament. So I say he reads everything, even no, idolatrous stuff. No, no. We, he, he asked you, where is it that somebody is going to come and die for the sins of Israel? Like you said, Christ was a martyr. Yeah, where, where's that, that in Tanakh? That's what we're asking you. That's no, what you I, I, you're not asking right? me that because I never said that that was in the Tanakh. So I don't know. But, I don't know where but, we're getting at here. But you believe in the Tanakh, right? Of course. I subscribe to the Tanakh. That's my foundation. I don't, I don't pick and choose stuff like Joe about someone, and stuff like that either. So Listen, guy, yeah. you and I are talking now. Okay. What I'm saying though is, where is there in the Tanakh that, that a man would come and die and make an atonement, an eternal atonement for Israel? What are you saying? I, I don't, I don't understand. I'm saying that. I I'm never said that, that. So, I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. Like maybe if so, you can find so it then, somewhere. No, I'm, what I'm saying is, Yah, the father, the father of Israel, the God of the universe, never said that he wanted somebody to come and die for the sins of Israel. I mean, I never said that. I'm trying to figure out where you're getting at, brother. Can we stick what to I'm what I said? Is, I never said yes. that. But you said that you said that Christ, that you believe in. I never said that word God. Christ. Yeshua bar Yosef. So let's stick okay. with that name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Yeshua, son of Joseph. You're saying that he died... It makes an eternal, an eternal atonement for Israel. That's not what I said. I said he was martyred. I don't know if you understand what the difference is die for and martyr. They're, they're two different implications, right? Yes. So I gave you an example. Wait, I gave you an example. You me, Israel was going astray. No, brother, listen. You, told me that you pushed me out of the way and you took the bullet, right? Yes. So, you. so have you, have you, have you read the lives of the prophets? It's a it's a text that was written in Hebrew yeah. but translated in Greek. Have you read that book no, no, before? No, 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 I have not. Okay, so let me so let me answer you. Let me so there's a reason why I'm asking you that. So the reason why I'm yeah. saying that's because if you read that text, brother, it talks about what happens to each one of the prophets that we find in the Tanakh. All of them were martyred. All of them were killed by their own people. All of them, right? And its description is that those individuals who died, that they're elders in in a council above. And they have works to do. Those prophets who died. That's what it says in the lives of the prophets. Now, this was a this was a text. That's a Hebrew text that was translated to Greek. Very similar to the wisdom of Solomon. But we don't really have any a lot of um, underlining uh, elements in order to say that the wisdom of Solomon was actually written in Hebrew at any point. 
But nonetheless, um, it was held by Sage to be canon to her, the wisdom of Solomon. Um, and I'm giving you a text called The Lives of the Prophets, which details. Now, this can also be substantiated in Jewish writings. All right. So if you're familiar with the Midrashim, are you familiar with that? The Midrashim in those writings, you can find that on safari.org. Are you familiar with that? Uh, just vaguely. OK, well, in there, you'll see sages talk about all the prophets being martyred for the sake of Israel. They were all martyred for Israel's sake. They all died for the sins of Israel. So you, you, had, one, you had one, but you would have one martyr that died, right? What does that mean? And you would have another one. You, then you have another prophet mm-hmm. that died, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another mm-hmm. and another. Mm-hmm. Okay. And when it got to when it got to the Christ of the New Testament, he died once and for all, right? What you mean? All of them died once and for all. The other prophets no, 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 died no, no, once and no, for no, all. No, 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 but but I mean there there are no nobody else is needed to make an atonement. What do you mean needed to make an atonement? There's no need for another prophet to do what he did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because every prophet, every prophet had a purpose. Zephaniah right. so, had a purpose, Zechariah had a purpose, Isaiah had a purpose, Ezekiel had a purpose, and after they died, nobody had to come behind them and do anything that they did. So now, but but show me where the Most High said that He wanted somebody to come and die and make an eternal. Why, why am I showing that to you when I did? I said I don't really. Where are we going yeah, with that, this? That's what I'm trying to show you. Well, I'm trying You're to show you that nothing. Never, I never said that. <laughs> I know, but what I'm saying though is, though, surely the Most High would have said, "There's somebody coming." Oh that's my God! Going to die for the sins. Show me where He said Isaiah was coming. Show me a passage before Isaiah where he said Isaiah was coming. Show me a passage before right, Ezekiel he said Ezekiel was coming. Show me a passage of Zechariah yeah. when he said Zechariah was coming. Show me this. Show me this. God. Show me, show me. Listen, God. before any of these prophets came, brother, listen, son. before any of these prophets came, show me where the Tanakh talks about them before they come on the scene. I'll wait for those You're passages. Making an extraordinary claim, though, for and the so were you them. about something no, that no, I never not. claimed. It is what you claimed. What are you saying? You deny I Christ? said that there was a text in the Tanakh that says that the father was going to send somebody to die for the sins of Israel. When did I say that? You keep no, arguing no, no, something saying, I didn't I said, say. No, 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 no. I said you, make, you made an extraordinary claim about the Christ of the New Testament. Which is what? That he came and died for the sins of Israel as, to make an atone, a final atonement. That he was. I never used divine. that word final That's atonement. That's how I know you haven't been listening. He's, he's, not, he's not paying attention. Martyr. This is crazy. Yeah, what, wow. what is it? Try making, so, <laughs> so, you know so, what? True, true, true. Do this. Do this. Divine, since he's getting your stance mixed up, can you please tell us? What Christ of the New Testament? Just clear it up once from so for yes, you are. And again, I'll do this as a courtesy and respect for you, right? Because I didn't come here to talk about this. Y'all want to okay, talk about it, but I'll entertain it. On. Yes, please. I want to get back to the tonight. Sure, sure, sure. And remember, and remember, he asked me a million questions now, and he said I could ask him questions, right? So yes. my position okay. is this. Yeah, gotcha. My position is this, right? So. The Nazarites and the Nazarenes, the Ebionites, and other, we call um, people of the way, right? These early groups were all considered Jewish Christians by anti Nicene church fathers who were Gentiles that wrote about them, and by academia today because they're using the historical nomenclature for these people groups in order for them to put things in the historical context. They did not subscribe to Yeshua bar Yosef as being God the Father, Yahweh. That was not their subscription. They believed that he received and was endowed with the Ruach and the Spirit, which enabled him to carry out his mission that he was sent to do, which was to be that last prophet in order to turn Israel back to the Father. This is what he came to do. They did not subscribe to a virgin birth, right? That was not part of their their ideology. When Yeshua came, he came to his own people, which was the Jews of his day, right? And he was the mouthpiece of Yah. The word of Yah was in him to speak to his people at that point in time, okay? That was their subscription. These groups only held to the book of Matthew. And the book of Matthew that they held has various textual differences between the text that they had, which was attested by people like Epiphanius, Jerome, Papias, um, Justin Martyr, etc., who have encountered these groups, and Jerome and Origen, who have read, because they were very few church fathers who can read Hebrew, but we see that Jerome and Origen knew Hebrew fluently, 
and they had copies of these texts and they quote from these texts and they showcase differences in these texts than what they had in a Greek text, which Jerome says the province, right? The provenance of that translation is unknown, the Greek text. This is what Jerome says. This is the father of the Latin Vulgate. He's the one that put it together. He, don't, he says, we don't know who, who wrote this text, who translated this Greek. But he says he knows for sure that Matthew, the publican, Matthew who walked with Yeshua, was responsible for a Aramaic, a Hebrew Aramaic form of what's called the book of Matthew. And he says that the Nazarenes that he encountered in his day were the ones that gave it to him. And a copy of the book was also at the Library of Caesarea. This is what he attests. That's what I subscribe to. All right. Are, we, are, are you following me so far? Is this sufficient enough, true Israel? Yeah. So if you were to sum that up. What yeah. Is the, what is so, the thing so, Christ so, so, so when you see like when you see elements of the Tanakh that are quoted in the New Testament, these are called qualitative attributes. OK, and they subscribe to the genealogy that we find in Matthew chapter one. OK, not in Luke's. That's a totally different situation. But Matthew chapter one. And because of such. Right. He by by nature of his genealogy, he was um, a proponent to sit on the throne of David. Right. And this is what they proposed, that he was going to sit on the throne of his father, David. Right. And they believed it in more of an eschatological um, prophetic. Right. That that's was going to take place and this was going to occur. That was their subscription. When he died, he became the mediator in a heavenly court on behalf of those who subscribe to his writings, right? His teachings and his way. Very similar to the teacher of righteousness that we find in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Matter of fact, if you take the corpus of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the New Testament and look for parallelisms, you'll find over a hundred plus parallelisms. A hundred plus parallelisms. And if we go into the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? And we look at the scroll of Melchizedek, we see the uh, the scroll of the pierced Messiah and all these other scrolls. A lot of these elements was already in the minds of those who did not subscribe to Yeshua. The difference is these so-called Jewish Christians, they ascribed it to a person, one particular person who they were following. Right. So those are my subscriptions is more historical than what we have today. And it goes back to the pedigree of those early followers that we find in Acts chapter 21 in the so-called New Testament. Okay, can I can I can I just say something real quick? Sure. sure I heard you brother. mention I heard you mention the, the library at Caesarea, right? Isn't that what you said? That's what Jerome said. He said a copy okay. of it is so, found there. Because if you know anything about the Library of Caesarea, um the cur curators <laughs> there, they collected thousands of books from all over the world. And they put it in one library, very similar to the library you have in your city. Right. The interesting thing about Caesarea, though, is there's a there's a real man named Caesarea. And that's the, the son of Cleopatra. Brother, please don't give me the true authorship of the New Testament he, 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 written in the 70s. Please don't give me, give me that pamphlet. Listen. Okay, brother, give go ahead. Because you're talking about the history now, right? No, but you're not going into history, though. I am going into history. You're, you're starting with it and then going to dive into out. fiction. Hey. Okay, go ahead, brother. Brother, brother, brother. You you said this to me before, so I don't know if you remember. This is maybe about four or five months ago. Can you just please just give me a Yes, second. brother. Yes, I'll be quiet. Right. My apology. So, so there's a real man named Caesarian. And this dude is the son of Cleopatra and uh, uh, Julius Caesar, right? This is a real man. And this Caesarian is the son of God because uh, Julius Caesar was voted the son. He was made a God by the Roman Senate. So Caesarian is the son of God. So it, it's, a, it's, it's no coincidence that the copy is found at this library, the library of Caesarea. You get what I'm saying? That's not a coincidence. And that's who this character, this made created through typology. That's who this, this that's who Jesus is. Are you saying, I mean, brother, that because they have a copy, that they're the author? 
<laughs> yes or no? Because there's no library that I know in the world who ever claims authorship to any of the books that's in their their possession. Hear me out. Hear me out. This, this is about this is about family, right? Because these families are ruling. They're the four beasts, so they're ruling the earth right now. And that's, and just, they're still ruling. We're still under the four beasts, so they are the ones publishing now. They own the publishing. When Israel was a nation, they own they, the they, publishing. They, exactly. What? That's where you find. That's where you find. That's what the libraries deal with publishing. No, they don't. What library you know that you go to that deals with publishing? All libraries deal with publishing. All right. So, so what libraries in your city, Rose City, you live in? In in the ancient world, libraries <laughs> the ancient were named world. after. Hear me out. Go ahead, brother. Okay. In the ancient world, libraries were named after the ruler. And that's Caesarian fine. Is, Caesarian that's fine. is uh, he has he has um, the bloodline of a ruler, of a world ruler in Julius Caesar. So of course he's going to have a library. Okay, so what does that have to do with what we're talking George about? Bush, show me Bush the OSS. And, listen, brother, show me the OSS. Obama got a library. library. All rulers have okay. libraries. But they're not the author of the saying? text in their libraries. That's fine. They're, they're all, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, okay. Out. If you go to the library of, of Clinton, they're going to have publishing of his time in office. Right? That's publishing. So that's what Cesarean is doing. Same thing. Like the library of Obama, library of Bush, library of whoever. It's the same thing. They are rulers and they have, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's been documented and now you have a library of it. So that's where this, this, is where this document is formed at. It's created and they have a think tank. No, there. that is not true. Have you read any works as it pertains so to did, the books that was. Hold, hold on, listen, brother. Have you read any testimonies of the library at Caesarea and what they say was collected and placed in that library? Can you show me a source that says that the person who's the library named after is the author and publisher of all those works? What source is that? Because I've never read that not, before. Right there. Not in, and I'm, I'll check at the ASOR library as well to see if they have that as not, well, because I've never read that. It's not, it's not in the library of Yah, which is the, the, the Tanakh. That's his library. And it came from Zion. It came from, the, it comes from Zion. That's his library. It's, that's where it's from. It's from the land of Zion. Right? <sighs> Man, all right. It's so, like the, so, so like that's Greek that's a belief, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's I'm a belief. To, I'm, I'm going to establish something here, uh, brother divine, because uh, we're we're getting there. But um, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here. But the thing I wanted to find out from you is, okay, uh, so you uh, you don't believe that? <laughs> oh wait a minute. God. You do believe that Jesus is divine, but you don't believe that he had a virgin birth. Uh, certain other things you don't believe that the Christians believe. And that, therefore, you're called a heretic. So, but one thing that the, the Christians do believe is that um, where it says in Matthew, and it, it, it alludes to a book in Isaiah, I think Isaiah seven fourteen, that this is a prophecy about the uh, Christ of the New Testament, the uh, uh, Jesus Bar Joseph. Oh, I think you call him Yeshua Bar Joseph. Do you subscribe to that prophecy? Is that a prophecy about him? Yeah, that's what's called qualitative attribution. I mentioned to that that to you earlier. Uh, you, Do you know what qualitative you, attribution is, my brother? It's just a, yeah, it's just an okay. attribute. It's an attribution. It's being ascribed to him, right? Qualitatively, but, yeah. So, right, right, qualitatively, but but it's not him, though, right? So, yeah. So let me let me explain. Right, the purpose of the purpose the purpose of that quotation was the element Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a prophetic term or utterance it means that Yah is with us it was given to a king in Isaiah chapter 7 to confirm that he will win the battle against his enemies who had came together and conspired to overthrow him yes that's the context of Isaiah 7 correct uh, yes it was okay filled, right? and then we see in Isaiah yep we see in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 3 Emmanuel is mentioned again 
who do you say that child Emmanuel is? No, in that Isaiah's historical child. context, Isaiah's son. Isaiah's now, now watch this. Did Isaiah's son have a name? Uh, yeah. Okay, so then why is he called Emmanuel? No, what I'm saying is this. Here's what I'm saying, though. I'm just saying this. I just want. <laughs> I'm just not trying to say this, oh, Divine. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to attack you. I'm just saying this. Are you saying then that uh, Isaiah 7:14? Is talking about yeah, the Christ in the New Testament. This is crazy. This is crazy. You're saying no. I think you're All saying right. that this is the attribute. It's just something that that can be applied. It's a prophet. It's not a prophecy, right? Okay. It is an utterance. It's a prophecy. Hold on. Hold it's on. not a prophecy. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna show you where that's the same technique is used in Don't the show me anything. I'm asking. Yeah. Y'all. Listen. 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 Okay, brother. Let me answer your question. I heard yes, you. Yes. No. Okay, brother. Yes. It's a prophetic utterance. When a person is named Emmanuel, it is there to give confidence to the nation of Israel that they will prevail over their right. Enemies. They will be okay. Right. Yeah. So, 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 what I'm saying is, if this is Isaiah's son that you read it in Isaiah chapter seven, because it tells you his son was with them, tell you his son's name, and you're saying that he's called this, he's given another name that is not his birth given name, because it was proof that the God of Israel was still with the kings of Israel, even amidst their wickedness, right? So what I'm saying is now we're taking that element, okay? And they are qualitatively attributing it to Yeshua. Because if you read what's said there, right? He has a work to do amongst his people. And that's why he was called to do it. And that's why they ascribe that element to him. And it's not taking anything out of context to say 7 and 14 in the past is put into Jesus. And then verse 15 is going back to the historical element. That's not what's going on there. And this exact technique that we're talking about is not only in the Tanakh itself. It comes in a whole bunch of pseudopirical Jewish works that is in the intertestamental period and even to the period in the Persian period. Have you read the archives of al Yehudu? And yeah, um, the, the the letters that we have at Elephantine yeah, and the are, references. You have, a, you, have a, you have a PhD in theology. No, why do you keep asking these questions? No, because uh, no, because it, it, it's part it's part of the point. Man, but you're making but you're trying to make points at something about stuff nobody knows about except you. No, who you think nobody knows about? It's it's here for reference so that people can look it up and hold me accountable to what I'm saying. Put it, put it in the uh, chat or something. I, I can't what talk and type is- at the same time, brother. I'm trying to have a conversation with I'm you. Do some more chatting. Okay. Do some, do some okay. Chatting. Can somebody be my scribe in the chat? And anytime I make a reference to a source, please type it in the chat, please. Okay. Yeah, Anybody in the audience? Chat, yeah, I'm put it in my back chat or, or you can uh, type it when you read up. If you make me a mod, I'll put a whole bunch of stuff at the top, if you'd like, so we can follow mm-hmm. along. <laughs> so the reason why I'm saying this to you the reason why, thank you, sis. I appreciate that. The reason why I'm saying this to you is this, right? I'm trying to show you that the technique that you find and what's called the New Testament is not a new technique. It precedes it. Matter of fact, the teacher of righteousness and the Qumram community, they did the same thing about him. But you Does that mean? Arguing. I want to get to another point. You act. I'm not arguing with. I'm. I'm. I'm okay. So now, that. so now you understand my position in regards to the quotation yeah. that's found in, in Matthew chapter one, correct? Right. So okay. now I want to talk to you about Isaiah 53. Is Isaiah 53 oh, the same thing? Man, Isaiah 53 is, Isaiah is talking 50? about Israel collectively as a servant. I mean, I'm trying to figure out where we're going at with this, brother. I just want to get back to no, the because, Tanakh, please. No, because we're talking about the Tanakh. No, we? you're bringing the New Testament. I don't want to talk about that. I can do that Isaiah another time with you. Is not the wow, New Testament. Oh, this is crazy. Isaiah 53 is not the New Testament. Where do you get that from? Brother, I'm just trying to stick in the Tanakh. You keep bringing me to the New Testament. I would like to get back to the talk to what we were talking about earlier about personification in Proverbs chapter 8, that that is not a being that was sitting there with Yahweh in the beginning. Because if it is, then I'm going to have to ask you some question, archaeologically speaking, because we have several reliefs that was found that's mentioning Yahweh and his consort. I'm asking you this. I'm asking like Asherah you, and Atarthic. I'm asking you this. But that's okay, when they in idolatry, though, you know, right? When they I don't, worship, well, no, that. because it was found during the time of Josiah's rule. I know, but we know Josiah tore down the things and everything, right? Exactly. So, so Josiah's father was in idolatry. That's fine. But we know that mm-hmm. when they worshiped the queen of heaven, they were in idolatry. So uh, we know Solomon. Who's the queen of so, heaven? Hulkma? Yeah. Then you have. You say, yeah. 
Yeah, wait, wait, Ashtarah, wait, wait, wait. Is Hulk, was Hulk Ishtarah. my the queen of heaven? No, yes no? Ishtar, Ishtar, Ashtara, that's the queen of heaven, right? So when they worship the well, queen no. of heaven. Well, no, what does it say that, sis? When they, what when verse says that Asherah is the queen of heaven? I never read that before. They kept it generic, yeah, when typically, when they said the queen of heaven. So yeah, show me so, what it says So that. you think mm -hmm. of when we get Ishtar, right? That was a Babylonian goddess, right? And they worshiped her. Ishtar, we get Easter from with the rabbit and the bird and well, all just, of that. Well, no, no, just show me where it says the Queen of Heaven is Asherah. No, no, I didn't say the Queen of Heaven was Asherah. You I did said say they that. No, I said they worshipped a Queen of Heaven. Then I said they worshipped Who Asherah, was the Queen of Heaven, sis? Ishtar. Uh, I guess if y'all having a wife. So if she's the Queen of Heaven, mm. y'all the King of Heaven, right? Who's the King of Heaven? Yeah, right? So if it's a Queen of Heaven, they're saying y'all has a wife. In other words, he has a consort. Saying, it's the same thing that y'all are saying. But I'm saying when they did that, it said they were in idolatry. Anytime they had Yah with a wife that was in idolatry. And if the word Yah is not said, wife, hold on, listen, 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 sis. Let me say this to you. Throne, no, no, sis, sis, listen, hold on, sis. hold on, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Hold on, listen. A consort, I understand what a consort. You know, Queen, <clears throat> uh, the queen who is right now, uh, whatever, she's called consort, right? Because she's consort to the king who sits on the throne. So my thing is this though, whenever they worship a queen of heaven or y'all having a wife, that was idolatry because over and over y'all told them I and I alone, even if he have a Holy Spirit, he had angels that do his bidding or anything, we're not to worship anything in heaven or earth, but Yah, he has no wife, period. He never said he had a wife. So if ever they're worshiping him with a wife, they're in idolatry. Now the can term, we, the term wife we, is. But I'm saying, can we agree on that? I, I got you. So the term okay. wife is not there. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, Asherah and Astarte and all those other deities you mentioned is not mentioned anywhere in Yem Yahu where this is talked about. Okay. And number three, this has to do with pouring out offerings and kneading bread for the Queen of Heaven, right? Burning incense, pouring out drink offerings, right? That's what the text is saying. Y'all said that Hokma was there in the beginning with Yah. That's what y'all said. So I'm asking you, can she be considered the consort of Yahweh? Because when you read Proverbs chapter 8, right, she said that he possessed her. You know, that same phrase is used in Devarim talking about a husband and wife relationship. Yeah, and it's also my, found elsewhere. In, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, but hold okay, on, so, my, so let me read on, that. When I read my, hold on, hold on. But when I read, when I read from the Tanakh, I have, mm -hmm. I put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. It said, he gave birth to me. Now the KJV says possess, but my Tanakh said he created me first. She mm -hmm. said created first. Mm -hmm. And then she said birth. And then mm -hmm. she said the deep was not when I was born, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So she talks about being created, birthed, and born. And then I went to Proverbs 7, 4, where it said, call wisdom your sister. Did not say call her your mother. And that's why I reiterated that when they when they had Yah with a wife or a queen of heaven, which Yah is the king of heaven, there's no one. Yah is the king. That's why all the angels, they call Prince Michael, Prince Gabriel. They call Prince because Yah is the king. He said he's the king, right? So if you worship a queen, King, queen, putting them together, you are in idolatry. That's what I was saying. Do you agree with that? When I say Chakma, wisdom, she does not say that she is, um, she said she was beside the master craftsman, right? Watching him create everything. So when you go to Isaiah 45, when the Most High said, I created the earth alone, stretched forth the heavens by myself. So she gives credence to that as a witness that Yah is doing all of the work. And therefore, Yah say, have no other God besides me. So if ever the Israelites or anybody worship a, a Ashtra or Tammuz or a queen of heaven or Baal or Jesus or put any deity besides Yah, if you got two gods or three or whatever, you are in idolatry, according to the Tanakh. All right, so let me read something for you real he quick, never okay? Said that to the heathen, by the way. Oh, no, facts, but watch this, y'all. Watch you say, this, Governor. I, but, no, well, hold on, sis. I got it. I got it. He I was didn't just hear you, giving Governor. some. What you say? Yeah, no, he was just. He was just. Um, 
No, no, he was just he was just complimenting what I said. I, I got it. So oh oh oh, I I'm, thought he said I'm gonna go to I'm gonna show y'all something, right? Y'all listen to what she says. Oh no, but I'm saying, but did you? Sis, did you hear I, what I, I said? agree. Yes, yes, yes I, I agree. Okay, I thank agree. You. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all what I said. Remember, I told y'all the act of getting a wife. That same word that says possessed there is used elsewhere in the Tanakh in that same sense. So I'm gonna read this for y'all so y'all can follow and y'all can go back and look it up yourself. Ruth chapter four and verse seven. Now, hold on. Let me wait. I got to ask you this, sis. Do you subscribe to this as being part of your canon? Do you subscribe that this is y'all inspired or no? Because you oh, just yes, be dismissing yes. stuff left and right. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> no, I, I, so, I only dismiss. No, no, no. I only dismiss. I know, sis. Joke. I'm just so messing don't with you. Left and right. I, I got to say, you. No, I don't do that. I ain't going to so, go down that hole. I got but you. So, so watch this, y'all. I'm going to put in the chat okay. what mm-hmm. mine says. It doesn't no, matter. No, 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 no. But listen, sis, I'm going to I'm gonna show you in the Hebrew, right? So let's read Ruth chapter four, verse seven. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm a transaction. The one drew off his sandal and gave it to the other. And this was the manner of attesting in Israel. So when the redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi, all that bought that belonged to, uh, Eli Melech, and all that belong to Chilion and Mahlon. Also, Ruth the Moabite, the widow of Mahlon, I have bought to be my wife, to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. So you see that word he says, where he says, I have bought, right? Let's go ahead and look at that in Hebrew, right? You can go, if you want to follow, um, go to the interlinear in Bible Hub and type in Ruth chapter 4 and verse 10, right? And you'll see that the word there is kwaniti, kwaniti. I have acquired. The root word is kana, and that means to get or acquire. Now, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 8 and see what this entity says Happened to her because I'm gonna show you elsewhere in other passages of Tanakh where the same word is used with a man is getting in a dowry to take somebody as his wife. Okay, Proverbs chapter 8, and let's jump down to the verse that says, I was possessed. Okay, verse 22 The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Now, Sage, read verse 22 in your translation, and then I'm gonna go into the Hebrew. What is what does it say in your translation? Hello. Okay. Uh, in my translation, Proverbs mm-hmm. chapter twenty-two, I put it in the chat. Yahweh created me first fruits, be- first of the fashionings, before the oldest of His works. From everlasting, I was firmly set from the beginning. Okay. Before the earth came to being, the deep was not. When okay. I was okay. Okay. Born. Okay. Sis, sis, just just there, stop there. there. Verse no, twenty-two. Um, no, I got you. No, um, possession. In what's mind. the name? What's the name of your translation? Uh, the name of my translation mm-hmm. is the Jerusalem Bible. Okay, and I read from the ESV. So let's read it in Hebrew, right? Yahweh Konani Reshit Darko Kedem Mith Allah Me'az, right? Me'az. So that word there, Yahweh Konani, that word is to get. To acquire, I know y'all like to use the strong sometimes, right? I don't use the strongs, but I'll I'll bear with you on strong. Strong seven zero six nine is the word used for that word possess me that you said doesn't say it says created. No, it's the word acquired to get. It's the same word that we see happen in the custom in Ruth chapter four, where Boaz acquired Naomi and the in 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 before all the elders of the town. And he took off the sandal to showcase that he redeemed her. So let's go to another passage that shows the same word there in regards to a man acquiring a wife. Okay. So let me give you another passage. See, 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 this is what I'm saying. This is why it's important to at least do a word study at the very least. I know the brother true Israel doesn't care about the Hebrew and that's fine, but it's good to do a word study. So you understand what's going on there. And that's why I ask you, is the queen of heaven Hokma? Because 
if the queen of heaven is Hokma, and she said that she was acquired by Yah, he took her to be his wife. That's what it says. So, so let's keep going. You want to keep going? You want more examples of the of the Tanakh where it says that? I just want to make sure people are studying no, the Tanakh no, now. No, no, it's oh, got it, got it. Hold on. Let me say this. Let me say this for one second, please, y'all. Let me say this for one second. Uh, you taking things off, right? Because uh, when I I put it in the chat, right, from uh the translation that I have, right, and it's possessing her from where she has to be created. If Yah is the number one created being. Where he gonna possess it from, right? <laughs> and if you're saying this is wisdom, Yah is all wisdom. So everything comes from him. The angels, us, we all made from his imagination. Every last being, everything the creator created is from his being, right? So you say he created the angels and uh, the binyan, all that, right? He created all these things. So if you're saying that she's his wife, where she come from? She's still, if you're saying that she's a possession who created this possession? Where did she come from? All right, so let me answer, let me answer your question. No, no, Hold on, no, let me no. answer what your I'm question. Saying okay, it, go ahead. What I'm saying. So first you go to say, because you got to make up your mind. Is she his wife? That he possessing her as that's, a consort? And, right? And if right? you believe she's right? an actual entity, then that's what that context I, would mean. That's not my position. Or, or it could be the other way. The way that I laid it out to the beginning. That he created her. He gave birth to her. He's her father the same way he's the sons, what you call the ben the sons. She's the Bama of, of his daughters, right? She's his daughter. If the other angels can be his sons, then she can clearly be his daughter, right? He don't need a wife. He don't have to procreate in that way, right? So but it you say he the, gave birth to I'm her. Saying, How did he give birth to her then? The same way he gave birth to everything, right? Okay. So, he gave so then why did he acquire to, her no, after this. he gave birth to her? No, it didn't so he acquired her. That's what you are No, I read the Hebrew. Don't believe me. Matter of fact, let me no, post no, the link no. in the I chat for y'all to see. Bogus Yiddish Hebrew. Let Yiddish. I'm not speaking I Yiddish. I'm speaking classical <laughs> Hebrew, not classical, Yiddish Hebrew. It's, it's not ancient. It's not pagan. So, right? But you're reading an English translation by pagans, I'm Christians. I'm reading an English right. translation. <laughs> <That's> English, <laughs> who you, who right? you think translated right? that Bible you got? That's why I asked you what Bible it was. Saying. Christians. But we're reading an English translation, right? <laughs> this is crazy. It's one one oh. verse, said, but look, one says possess, <laughs> and one says birth, This is crazy. Right? So, 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 Yo. so look at that, right? So the one that I'm reading, this is, I didn't write this. Look what it says, and it does not go with what Yo, you're trying this to is put crazy. out. It says, Yah created me. He ain't possessing her. He created her, and Yah created everything. So just go with the Tanakh as Yah being a creator. She's saying he created her too. First of his fashion, I'm saying she's the first thing created, right? Before the oldest of his works from everlasting. I was firmly set from the beginning before the earth came into being. The deep was not. Remember that spirit that hovered over the deep? She's saying she was there before the deep, right? The deep was not when I was born, nor were the springs with their abounding waters. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I came to birth before he, the most high is making everything. She's not making anything. She's just a witness, obviously. Before he had made the earth, the countryside, and the first elements of the world. When he fixed the heavens firm, so he created the heavens and all the angels with him, right? I was there. When he drew a circle on the surface of the deep, when he thickened the clouds, when he assigned the sea its boundaries that the waters would not encroach on the shore, I was beside the master craftsman. She ain't say I was beside my husband. I was be or beside my, uh, what, if she the wife or the queen, then the king, right? I was beside the master craftsman. She called y'all the master creator, delighting him day after day, ever at play on his earth delighting to be with the children of men and now children listen to me happy are those who keep my ways listen to instruction instruction what is instruction the tanakh that's what wisdom guides you to the tanakh the father alone listen to instruction and become wise do not reject it blessed whoever listens to me who day after day keeps watching my gates to guard my porters for whoever finds me finds life and obtains the favor of Yah, but whoever misses me harms himself, and all who hate me are in love with death. 
Remember what it says about wisdom cannot dwell in the body of an evildoer, nor can a fool possess her. So if y'all have not given you his Holy Spirit, then you will not be able to see and understand him. It leads you to him. That's the job of Chakma, the Holy Spirit, to lead you to the Father, to make you right before him. As I read in Wisdom chapter, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 sums up her job and what she is required to do. And it said they praise Yah, not her. So she's not on All the right, so, so. Yah. So you're keeping the first commandment, which is have no other God besides me. Okay, I got it. So, so, so what I'm saying, no wife. I, okay, so what I'm trying to simply demonstrate is if you're taking Proverbs 8 literally, okay, you have a problem. And that problem is that Yah gave birth to another deity who was there with him during creation by his side. And she says that she was acquired by him. Now, if you take it, if you take it as personification, which is how this should be read, and people that actually know the language, they'll tell you that this is personification, then you'll see that there's no issue there because personification is you're taking a hokma, which is an idea, and you're giving attributes to it, like that of a woman. And you're doing that as a literary way of conveying a message to the recipient audience. And that is for them to hear the voice of wisdom, even when it comes from a woman. In this case, a wife that you see later on in the book of Proverbs. Uh, where where right? did I say woman? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Divine. Oh, okay, this okay, okay. Divine. You can't okay, say wait, wait, wait. What I did. Hold on, so, hold on. So, so wait, what wait, is Hokma? Tell us what wait, 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 is. It's the spirit. It said the spirit of God. I went to Genesis 1 is it, 1 and showed you. Is it feminine? You. Hold on. I told you that it's the spirit that hovered over the deep. But Proverbs and never I, never calls Hokmah wisdom. Um, but, uh, I mean, Hokmah the yes, spirit. Yes, it does. Wait, it never calls it spirit anywhere. What is it called spirit yeah. in Proverbs chapter 8? Show me. No, no. What I said is this. She's saying she was created before the earth. So she can't be a woman because humans ain't here yet. So if she's created, she said he created me before he created the heavens. So she has to be a spirit. She's show, not a woman. show me where Hokmah is called the spirit. In no, what I'm saying tonight. is this. What I'm saying is this. She's not a woman. Human beings have not been That's created That's fine. I'm yet. not saying that anymore. Show me where Hokma oh. is called the spirit. Listen, sis. Show me where Hokma is called the spirit in Proverbs for me to go back to Genesis Chapter one, verse two, to assume that that's the same thing. Show me where that's at in the, in the book of Proverbs. I'm going to show you what I just read in Proverbs. She said he created her first. So she's a created being. She's not a human because he hasn't made humans yet. So obviously she's a being. Now, now you could put spirit on it or whatever, right? We go to Isaiah 11 and 1, it'll call her spirit. You'll see her call the spirit throughout the rest of it, right? But there it just said the spirit of Yah hovered over the deep. So I go to Proverbs 8 and she says the deep was not when I was born. So there was no deep at first. She said there was no earth. There was no heaven. She watched him create all these things. So she's saying when she looked, when she was created, she the first thing she know y'all better than any of us, right? She said he's he there. So she said she beside him. So she see y'all in whatever form he's in. But she is not a woman. I never said that. And it said before the earth was created. She said this. So I am not writing this. Is this not what I wrote? She said, Yah created me. So first she said she's created by yeah she said before he gave birth she gave he gave birth to me before he created the earth the heavens the the, the waters the seas the hills the mountains she named it everything right he created her before all these things so she has to be a being some type of being and i'm saying that it's a feminine being is what it is right yah is comparing himself to a he we know he's not a human man, but he wants us to look at him in the masculine form of identification. So, Yah is a he. He refers to himself as our father. Wisdom is a she. 
another a spirit being that's referred to in Proverbs 7, 4 as our sister. And then the other angels Yah create, he referred to them as sons. They're called princes. And he is called the king of heaven. So he's the king of heaven. Wisdom and all the other female uh, angels that he created. You can see Zechariah 5, they're, fem they're female angels there too, right? So he created the female and male angels. Oh, they is a female son. angel? Is that what I just I, want to make sure that's what you no, said? No, no, she's a, she's a being. Do you want to call a, it? Is she female? That? She's a feminine being. Okay, use the, word, use the word male and female for the angels. Like, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I said just like yeah, is considered a he. But he's not a man. He's a masculine. He wants us to think of him in the masculine. So we identify him as he and father. Y'all don't tell us to call him mother, but he said he's a father to us, right? And he called the angels. Uh, when, when That's you anthropomorphism about, again. You're aware okay, of that, right? But he still called them he. That means he wants them to be identified either in the masculine or the feminine aspect. Maybe it's their qualities. I don't know. But that's the way that he is having us to be able to identify him and the beings that he create, who we call angels today. Right. So that's all I'm looking at. I'm not going to go into that's his wife because it doesn't say she his wife. It doesn't say that she is his um, that he uh, possessed her. It says he created her. So I can only go by what I'm reading. So 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 when I go by what I'm reading. Beginning, no, no. What I'm saying says, is that okay. if she's placing herself there in the beginning, my my next question was to you. Right. And you say that that spirit that's hovering over the deep is not her. Then I want to know who is that spirit that's with Yah that's hovering over the deep. All right. So the text tells you what that spirit is, right? It's very clear in Genesis uh, without having to borrow something somewhere else, okay? In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So the text tells you, where Ruach Elohim. That word there, we, means and. Ruach, it means spirit, right? It's in the construct form, which means it takes of as a possessive. And then you have Elohim, the spirit of Elohim. That's what that was. I'm not going to force no divine feminine entity there when the text is telling us that this is the spirit of Elohim. Very simple. And, and and you don't believe that that's uh, Christ of, of uh, well, no, Christ I don't believe that. No, I don't believe yeah, that. Yeah. No. Yeah, because I, I want to get back to one more one more thing. Oh that, my God! You going back to the New Testament? No, 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 no. This is, this is <laughs> no. But, well, what I want to ask you though, I, I want to thank you first of all. Oh, I know shit, you're asking a lot of questions. <laughs> Come on, Governor, stop it! You know you grown? Are you a child? These noises. Now he's keeping people awake and engaged in the conversation. That's all. No, 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 no. He's put down in the audience and he keeps it up. You, you don't, you don't even appreciate it's the mind, but it's childish. Baby. You can't even appreciate. She made you a mind. You said you could have a mind, but so you can present information. Yeah. You ain't yeah. presented no information, right? And then you, you being insulting to the because nobody else doing that to you. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to have a serious conversation. You hit them with, with buttons and stuff. Right. Okay, right. you you sent the brother down, right? And now right. we're we're still talking. You think this, I think okay. you just so, think the same. So, I didn't. So I didn't do any of that. I'm just having a conversation. You having a childish conversation? I'm having a what? A childish okay, here's, conversation. Here's my, question. here's my question. So let me and correct me if I'm wrong, but your 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 position is this: that the Christ of the New Testament, that Christ, the Son so of Jesus. So you're Joseph, going back to the New Testament. Okay. But I'm trying to get I'm trying to get to a point though, the Christ of the New Testament, uh, the Christ, the Son of Joseph, as you would call him, he was born just a regular guy, right? He had dirty diapers and everything. He was born just a regular guy, no nothing miraculous about his birth. He grew up, he studied Torah, and, and through his study of Torah, he raised himself up so that he could become God, right? I never said any of that. That's not my position. Correct me. 
So, but all right, what part you want me to correct you about? All right. So first, so, so he was wait, born so a regular on, guy, right? He was hold born on. a regular guy, right? Hold on, hold yes on, no? hold on. I'm gonna give you a scripture, okay? From Tanakh. Give me a scripture. I'm asking no, you. I'm, I'm, and this is gonna answer my question. Why you don't want this? Why you don't want Tanakh? You want to read scripture, brother? This would be shorter. This would be shorter. What? This would be, this would be very shorter. This would be very short. Here, he was born regular as a regular Jeremiah guy. Jeremiah right? chapter one, verse five. Before I formed thee in the now. belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. There you go. Now I can I can go to David as well right. and see what David talks about being formed okay. in the inward so, parts. So hear me out. Hear me out to that. Let me let me respond to that real quick. Who's this so now? So I'm talking out. to or true Israel? Okay. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Right now. You know who you're talking to. All right. So you just showed how Jeremiah, how the most high knew Jeremiah from the womb, right? So this is how he you so now you can see wisdom in this. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, no, verse 21. And Yah caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his Teslas, his side, and enclosed up the flesh instead thereof. And the Tesla, what is the side which Yah had Tesla. taken from the man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So that that's how wisdom was brought forth. That's how she was. She's telling her creation story right there, just like you brought out Jeremiah, right? This is how we, she's telling your creation story. That's how he created this spirit, this force. What? I, I have no clue what you was just talking about, brother. I have no clue what so you was getting. Why, why, why did you, you go to? Up? Why did you go to Hawa? Why did you go to Eve? Because you went to. When he knew Jeremiah from the womb. Yeah, so what does that have to do with Eve? Because he formed this test, this type of spirit. He formed that spirit, Jeremiah, in the womb. Okay. That's how, how he formed Adam, right? How he formed Adam. Create. Right. Yeah, but how he, formed he, him from the, he, he formed him from the dust of the earth, and he it breathed don't matter. into him. That's how no, it does matter does it. because Jeremiah is not Adam. This is how he creates. He creates how he wants to. From his imagination. But how is Everything that relevant, his, brother? I'm trying to understand the connection. I'm confused. Because we're trying to show you wisdom. What? And she's telling you her creation story. So she was and created out the side of Yahweh. That's what you're saying? Just like the woman is yes, created. Yes or no, brother? Name? That's what you're saying? I just want to make sure I get your point. I'm telling you, she telling, she's telling us her creation story. That means yes. In the Eve, in the Eve story, it's telling you her creation story. Okay, so did Hawkmoth get? Did she get taken out of the side of Yahweh and become the defined feminine force called the Ruach? Is that what you're saying? That's what Eve. That's how Eve was. Created. Okay, that's your position. All right, I just mother, wanted to know, brother. She's, she's okay, a, she's the mother of us. She's the, the mother point. of us all. I, I don't think that's a point that uh, True Israel wanted to make, but since you're all on the no, same no, no, stage, no. I'm gonna believe monolithically that you're all in agreement with that. So that's cool. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But all I want to ask you now. Okay, let's let's say this. I want to ask you this. So you said what I said earlier that there was no, nothing that you subscribed to. So let's, I'm gonna take it point by point. So do you believe that the Christ of the New oh, Testament okay. just had a regular birth? It wasn't you know, immaculate or anything special. Yes or no? If you answer nuanced, he had, a, he, had a, he had he had a birth. But a messenger came and spoke to his parents about. But, hey, hold on, hold on. You asked me a question. I'm answering your question. A messenger came and spoke to his parents about his birth, which is not anything unusual that we don't see in the Tanakh. For example, Judges chapter 13 is a very similar example of that. So it's not nothing that's unusual that's um, asymmetrical to the Tanakh. Right. But what I'm saying though is, but you you subscribe to the to the uh, fact that Joseph. Was his father his yes, real brother. father? Yes, yes. I, okay. Yes. I, yes. So, so you're gonna keep asking me questions. I'm gonna keep giving you answers, and then I want to get back to the Tanakh, and and then oh, maybe ask you some more to. questions. Okay, I want to get back to this, but okay, but if the answers are more nuanced, just let me know. So then he just he was a regular guy, right? He's just a regular guy, but somehow through his study of Torah. He elevated himself and became. Brother, I'm not saying none of that. You're saying that. You asked me what I believe. It. Listen, I answered your question. No, he wasn't just some he's regular guy that studied Torah. I'm not saying said, that, brother. He said, he said he's godly. He's in the heavens. I'm he's gonna say. I'm, I'm saying that's posthumous, brother. That means after his death. 
If you're talking about prior to his but being born. That, no, 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 no. I'm talking about after his, you said that the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove, right? That was Matthew chapter three. Now you're talking right. about his birth in Matthew chapter one. No, 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 no. I'm actually, I'm talking about his life, how he became divine. I just told you the Ruach fell upon him, but he was right. prophesied. He was prophesied just like other prophets are prophesied before they're born. Other okay, judges are prophesied the, before they're born. Let me get to this point then. Like no, no prophet when they made atonement for Israel was ever worshipped. Do you believe that you should worship the Christ of the New Testament? You yes, in the, in the same aspect that David was worshipped, in the same aspect that David was called Adoni, in the same aspect that David told the children of Israel to pay homage and obeisance to Solomon, where they bow down before the Lord and the king. The word shakar is there. That means worship. The same way that we see that uh, Abraham bows down before Yahweh, in the form of three messengers in better sheet chapter 18 kings they weren't worshiping. were let me let me let me let me finish kings were paid homage they bowed down and even kissed the feet we see that in the assyrian relief of jehu they bowed gotcha. down and they kissed the feet before the dignitary they say gotcha. my lord they say i'm nothing but a dead dog they make all these phrases we see in the tanakh also in epigraphs outside of the tanakh this is so, how they pay homage to dignitaries but you don't believe that he should be worshipped like you're like a, a, a Christian does. I said he's sense. not the father. He's not the creator. So therefore, no, he's not worshipped in that sense. He is they worshipped or worshiped. homage you is paid to him him. in the same you manner. Don't pray to, you don't pray in his name or anything like that. I pray to the father. So I'm going to say it to you again, brother. David. I got you. Just, you got me, brother. You sure you got me? Yeah, you said. It. Yeah, you said. It. You just said it. That's all I wanted to know. That you don't pray to him. You don't. All right. Him. So where are we getting that with this? Can I get back to the tonight? What was your point? Well, my point is this then. My point is, if there's nothing special about him, then why do you... I never said that. Did you not hear me read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5? Then you not hear me say, divine saying, messages came to his parents, and they told them what would happen, what he would do? It, that is something that is extremely special. I, wh where are you getting this from, brother? No, but what I'm saying, though, is if you don't need him, if he's not doing anything for you, then why do you need him? But who said he wasn't doing anything for me? What is, what is he, he doing? For you? What is he, he doing? He's the, he's the head of the order of Melchizedek. As we see prophesied in the Dead Sea Scrolls, in the scroll of Melchizedek. Have you read the scroll of Melchizedek talking about the sons of light? Are you familiar with that text? No, no, no. Okay, no, so he's no. the one that's proposed to be that character. So, so the sons of light, the, hold on, Melchizedek and the sons of light have a mission eschatologically in the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's a whole scroll written about this, a whole narrative written about this. So was what I'm doing is, yes, Melchizedek. You said what? Was, was David? Was David? Uh, after the order of Melchizedek? Yes, yes. And so was all his sons. That's why we see them in Second Samuel chapter 8 and 18 called Kohanim. Yes. So let me, so let me, let me finish. Wait, 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 wait. His sons was called priests, but they wasn't called kings. Cause I, didn't, I didn't say they were kings, bro. sis. I said priests. Kohanim means priest, sis. But the order of Melchizedek means that he is not just a priest. But is it is it the Malak Zadok? Kings. Hold on, a righteous king. Priest so we know kings, Sham. Yes. What Sham is the was Melchizedek who Abraham met. No, you know, you're getting Isaac. that from Jasher. Sis, listen, the text no, doesn't no, say no, that no, in the Tanakh. No, you get that from show, no, show no, me no, where. No. Show me in the Tanakh where that's at. Who was the king of Salem during Abraham's time? Melchizedek. Shem. No, no. Shem. Where's show me? Show me in Tanakh. Okay, no, show me in Genesis. Show me in Genesis where that's at. What verse? What, what I'm saying is that how okay. old was Shem when he died? 600. I, I'm going to say it again. Show me. Shem died. Sis, so show Abraham me. Just show me where the, where it's at in Genesis. Where does the Genesis listen, say that? You know that they don't say his name there, but I'm going to tell oh, you why it's God. him. Wait, listen for a second. I'm going to tell you in the audience. I'm not just talking. I'm talking to the audience. Maybe they don't know that Melchizedek that Abraham met was Shem. Now, Shem is 600 when he died. Abraham is 140. When Abraham come from defeating the five kings, he meet up. And it ain't like he don't know this person because he, he know him very well. He's taught under him, right? So the king of Salem at that time, until he dies, and he's not dead yet during the time Abraham meets with him, is Shem. And the reason why it's the order, because Shem was a righteous king and high priest. None of that is in Tanakh. David, that is in Tanakh. That's in Tanakh. Show me. Give me the verse for that. That says he was a, a righteous high priest and a king. I said that's what it means. That, that's a title. That's not a name. It is that's, a name. 
No, 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 no. Melchizedek is not a name. That is a it's title. A it name. means righteous king. Okay, so you want me Malachi to show you other Scott. names? Hold on, sis. No, I can no, show no, you no. other. What hold I mean, on, I can show you I mean other names that's just hold like on. that. Hold on, it's a it's a title though, because he is a righteous king. He's like you see Abimelech, um, uh, Melchizedek. Uh, you see those are titles, right? So when you look at Melchizedek, that is a title, which means Malak Zadok is Shem. And the order of that is he's a righteous king, David is a righteous king, Uzziah a righteous king, Hezekiah a righteous king. That's the order of Melchizedek, which is Shem, who set the standard. So if Christ is a Melchizedek, Malak Zadok, like David, then you're telling me that Christ ruled a kingdom and sat on the throne or he operated as a high priest? Can you give me book, chapter, and verse where Christ sat on the throne like David? Because you keep comparing him to David. So let's compare him to David. Yeah, but David why am I comparing him to David? Because Psalms 110, Psalms 110 is about David, right? So the Lord, which is Yah, said unto my Lord, King David, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your oh, footstool. Second Samuel chapter this 8, you see crazy. Yah do just that. Make all David enemies his footstool, right? That's what Psalms 110 is talking about. David, after the order of Melchizedek. Why? Because he is a king and priest, as you said. Wore the ephod, head on the linen clothes, ate the showbread, giving sacrifices, sitting in the presence of Yah, eating in the presence of Yah, right? David did all those things. Psalms 89. Let me read Psalms 89. No, you don't have to read it. We know Psalms 89 says. No, you I, I know hear your Psalms point. 89. It's, a, it's many people in here, and they may not know Psalms 89. But they can It'll read tell it. You what, I, I know, but I'm going to read okay, it for them just now. Scripture. We can do a lot of literature. Let's, let's read some scriptures. That's what I've been Psalm doing. 89. Psalm 89. Look what the <laughs> Most High said. Psalm 89. This is a psalm about David. It's not written by David. After Psalm 72, the prayers and psalms of David have ended. He's given the charge to the sons of Asap. And now you'll see 73, 74 on. And now those are the ones who David has given the charge. And they're writing the songs now. Look what Psalm 89 said. It said, Psalm of Ethan, the native for Ethan, the, the native born. I shall sing the faithful love of Yah from age to age. I have made a covenant with my chosen one sworn an oath to my servant David. I have made your dynasty firm forever, built your throne stable age after age. The heavens praise your wonders, Yah, your constancy in the gathering of your faithful. Yah, awesome in assembly of the holy ones, great and dreaded among all who surround him. Yah, who is like you, mighty Yah, your constancy is all around you. You control the pride of the ocean when its waves ride high. You split Rahab in two. In your name, they rejoice all day long by your saving grace. Once you spoke in a vision to your faithful, you said, I have given strength to a warrior. I have raised up a man chosen from my people. I have found David, my servant, and anointed him with my holy oil, my hand will always be with him my arm will make him strong no enemy will be able to outwit him i shall crush his enemies before him and strike his opponents dead my constancy and faithful love will be with him and my name his strength will be triumph i shall establish his power over the sea his dominion over the rivers he will cry to me you are my father my power, the rock of my salvation. So I shall make him my firstborn, the highest of earthly kings. I shall maintain my faithful love for him always. My covenant with him will stay firm. I have established his dynasty forever, his throne to be as lasting as the heavens. Should his descendants desert my law and not keep my rulings, should they violate my statutes and not observe my commandments? Then I shall punish their offenses with the rod, their guilt with the whip. But I shall never withdraw from him my faithful love. I shall not belie my constancy. I shall not violate my covenant. 
I shall not withdraw the words once spoken. I have sworn by my holiness once and for all, never will I break faith with David. His dynasty shall endure forever. His throne like the sun before me, as the moon is established forever, a faithful witness in the skies. Yah has sworn and made a covenant with David. So we're talking all this talk about Christ. But what people need to know is that it's not Christ that's coming back. It is our King David that is coming back. Great. King Yah David is coming back. Okay, I got you, sis. I yes, agree. Yes, so yes. where are we going with Yah this? Can we get back to the Tanakh? This is crazy. Here's the Tanakh. Y'all keep going to the New Testament. This is wild. I'm not reading no New Testament Psalm 89. It's no, 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 no. But, but this but, is but crazy. Divine, divine, divine. Oh, no, I, divine, divine. I'm divine. Not you, sis. Not you, Sage. You did. Oh, oh, oh. I was going to say, I'm not in the. I'm, I'm no, in the but true Israel's I'm, I'm all saying. throughout that joint. He's running up and down no, 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 and everything. No, 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 he's in the bathroom and everything. Well, the thing is, he's he trying to Matthew. get your stance because this is your first time. That's all. This your first time being with him, right? Your first time uh, correct. With him. Correct. So he's right. trying to get your stance, and it and and you're speaking. But why? I didn't come to talk about that. That's not what I came to talk about. But, but you want to know what on we the table. think? Hold on. No, no, no. We're talking about the Tanakh. Yes, so about the Tanakh. Fair that he, but it's only fair that he know where you're coming but, from. Okay. You know we to knock only, right? So if you come in right, and ask us, we we to knock only. We tell you we reject the New Testament, we reject Christ. That's fine. Right? Okay, I wasn't even so talking you, about none of that. But what I'm saying is that you know our stance. Yes, but I didn't bring none asking, of that to the table. I just want to talk I, to I, I, but, but I, I, I know, but he this is his first time dealing with you, oh so God, that's why he man. was asking you this, and you was giving him nuances instead of just direct questions. You know, no, no, it, it is nuances because it's not orthodox. So I know, of course, but what I'm saying, if, if he asks you, but, <laughs> but but look, if he asks you, uh, do you believe in uh, Christ, and you're showing him that you don't believe it from a Christian perspective, right? You're showing that's what you're trying to relay to him, right? That you don't believe it that way. That's why he keeps asking you because your answers are not clear. He, How is he, it not clear? I, it's, I'm it's just not, saying. No, it's, it's not. But, but what I'm saying though, I'm just trying to pinpoint something here. So, and you said that you said. Because I'm, I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that you believe that that Christ of the New Testament, that Christ, uh, who was the son of Joseph, that you believe that he wasn't divine. He wasn't born divine, but that he became divine because he mastered the Torah. Is that is that? That's, I didn't say nothing that? like that at all. So I'll say he what I said he, again. He said he got the. He said he got the spirit. You said a, he was baptized, I'm, right? Exactly. So why are you saying master Torah? So I'm gonna say what I said again, right? So I said Matthew chapter one and Luke Torah. chapter one talks about a Melach coming to Miriam, coming to Yosef, and prophesizing about their child. No different than what we see in other passages in the Tanakh, such as Jophtarim or Judges chapter uh, 13, right, with Manoah and his wife, right? And we see in other cases where this, this happens. It's not something that is unusual, right? Um, where Yahweh in Genesis 18 talks about the son that Abraham would have before he had his son, right? So what I'm simply saying is, this is what happened in his case. This is not just no regular person that mastered Torah and now I'm a master teacher and I'm going to go save Israel. That's not what's happening in the narrative. So I explained to you that part. And I told you he was adopted in Matthew chapter three when the spirit dawned on him. That's when he became divine. That's when he started whatever mission that was given to him to do. That's when he started to do it. Now, in regards to Torah, yes, he went to the synagogue all the time. He kept the feast days all the time. So therefore, he would be exposed to Torah. And if he, according to his own proclamation that he is being taught by the father, the father's words are spoken about in the Torah and the father does not go against his word. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, when his word goes out, does not return to him void. So everything that the father would say to somebody, especially people who claim that the father talks to them, it's not going to go against Torah, right? So you're saying this 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 narrative of mastering Torah, he's a regular person, dirty diapers, and he mastered Torah, and he <laughs> self-proclaimed. You're saying, wait, hold on, hold on, wait. But you're saying that in a colorful fashion, I'm not saying any of that. I told to... you it's very plain what my position is, and it's according to what is cited in the text itself. That's all, brother. Right. And, and so when we talked, and then you talked, you said this, something about him being the, uh, after the order of Melchizedek. And I think you and Sage sort of, sort of teased that out because even though you never really explained how he was after the order of Melchizedek, since he never was a king, 
He never was a priest. So he was I, I'm adopted. Not sure where you get from. He was adopted. I mean, on earth, on earth, he was never a king. So and a was David a priest? Tell me, yes, show me, show, okay, show me a passage where he did any of the priestly rituals of atonement, um, any priestly rituals of the offerings that's given at feast days. Um, let me, let me, any of the hold on any of the any of the any of the cleanliness laws right he wasn't a, a Levite priest he wasn't a Levitical priest okay so so now let's move aside from that the now, as a, priests are not Levitical hold priests. on hold on hold on do Melchizedek priests give offerings yes or no uh yes to to God directly yeah David David's uh made an offering to, as an atonement for the for the sins of the people when he numbered numbered them well he was he was called an adversary for that and he was he was actually punished for that. Matter. So so watch this. Watch this. David was on, punished divide. for the census that he did on his behalf without inquiring through a priest and without getting ever, sanctioned. But, but did he but did David but oh, hold on, but God. did David do an offering and the most high is the one who had David to number? It said Yah Give was me. angry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It said Yah was angry with Israel and he roused David to number them. And then what happened to David after that? And what did David then, say? And then David said What? I have David said I have sinned. So the most high, the most high caused David to sin. Great. The most high caused him. Hold on, hold on, awesome. hold on, hold on. But, but look, you brought the, look, 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 listen, listen for edification of the room in case people don't know. That's why I like to go into these stories on gloss over them, right? Just throw stuff out there and gloss over it. This is and crazy. David, like Brother True said, this is crazy. God told David to make an offering to them, right? David made an altar. He prayed for the saint for them, right? And it said, Yah, stop the plagues. On the account of David, because Yah did that because he wanted to punish them. Can we agree on that's the, why did the he context? Want, so, so why did he want to punish David? No, no, he wanted to punish Israel. So why, he, why? So why did he punish David as well? It said he was angry with them. So David did no sin. Yah caused him to number them. It read Second Samuel, and you'll see it said Yah was angry with the children of Israel, and Yah caused. Did you read? Did you? What, what does it say? What does it say in Chronicles? The corresponding passage. What does it say? It, it said, and Yah sent Satan to number to oh, have him shoot. to number them. That's fascinating. So, so, yeah. but it's still Yah it's did it, right? I didn't say he did it. He sends evil spirits to do stuff all the time. I so got you. So Yah sent the evil spirit to have so, David so, to so that's what you're him, saying. Okay. So he can punish them and them. cause David to sin. And he caused David to sin. Gotcha. And then okay. he had then Yah had David. That's to not my pray. position. Hold on. That's what the scriptures say. And then Yah the and then Yah caused <sighs> David to pray for them. And then it said, Yah, when David built that altar and prayed, it said, Yah then relented and 70,000 died that day. Yah halted the angel between Jeshurun as he was tearing them up. And then it said, David prayed for them because Yah caused him to do it. It didn't say David numbered them on his own. It said, Yah caused David to number them so he could deal with them because Yah was angry with them. And Yah killed 70,000 thousand of them in the plague because he gave David a choice three months of running from your enemies three years of famine or three days of pestilence and, and David chose the three days of pestilence and he prayed and Yah stopped it so David did who he didn't sin in that read Yah first, read first, read first Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 1 yes I know it said and Satan incited him but we, but when you read Second Samuel, it says so, Yah, so Yah caused. But listen, Yah sent the evil spirit to Satan to uh, David to have him to number them, because it all it's all Yah. It's so all is Yah. Yah Satan. Yes or no? No, Yah sent the evil where's, spirit. Where's this? Where's it say he sent an evil spirit? It said Yah sent an evil spirit. You must then read. No, uh, just read it. Just read it for let's, us, let's, because let's I want I want to make sure Second Samuel let's, let's go agrees to the what we're reading. First Chronicles twenty one. Uh huh. Go ahead and read it. Sir. But both of them are saying that it was sent by Yah. Either way it go, because sure. Yah was. But why? It clearly evil. says. But listen, it says Yah was <laughs> angry with Israel because oh, they man. were sinning. So by him being angry with them, he caused David to number them. Had David think something, you know, was numbering them, which he should, what he wasn't supposed to do. David said, I've sinned. Yah began to kill them and he killed 70,000 of them. He didn't kill David. He killed 70,000 Israelites. 
Anybody can read the account of that story. And then it said, Yah had David build an altar, offer sacrifices, and then the plague stopped. That's just the account of the story, brother. I didn't write this, right? So I didn't say you did. So what we're trying to figure out through this altar that David built and this offering or the sacrifice that he gave, right? You're going to show me that this has something to do with the order of Melchizedek. Is that what he's, is that what, what just Israel was about brother, to show me? Because you jumped you, in and brother, added that. No, no, she, she was correct. But brother, you said this earlier out of your own mouth. You said that David was a priest. You said all David, you said David's sons were a Kohanim. I was was Job a priest? Uh, listen, we're not talking was about. Ab- no, no, no. I'm talking about oh, things. No, they no, also gave offerings. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They hey, also Joe, gave offerings. No, 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 no. Because we went from we went from Yeshua to David. So if he can jump from Yeshua to David, I can go from David to somebody else. Because y'all comparing Yeshua to David? Because you brought up David. When did I say that? I didn't say when, that. I said well, he's from that lineage. About Yeshua, you went to David and was you making the You kept going to David as if it's 2.8 billion people running he around said, calling he David, David the Lord. He, he said David. David was worshipped like, like uh, was Christ. He said I, the said, people, I said exactly. that as a king, he was worshipped. And that he means the deified, scripture says though. that. Okay. But he wasn't deified. Hold That's on, what slow, made me bring slow, out slow, Psalms slow down, 89, though. Slow down, slow look, down for a second. Divide, we have to be honest. Oh, That's what man. made me bring out Psalms 89 when you said that and tried to compare Christ to David. And, and we were showing you the difference <sighs> in Yah actually has crazy. scriptures where he's chosen David above all earthly okay. kings. Listen, so if listen. You're, you're comparing Christ to David. Was Josiah, to was Josiah greater than David? Was Josiah greater than David? No, but Josiah was Hezekiah was greater than David? Yes or no? Is that no, the, does the text say? King, does the text does the text though. say? Does the text say that they were greater than David? Yes or no? No, but it's but it compared okay, them let me to pull David. It up. Okay. But it compared them to David. It said, and he did right as his father David did. So, so it tells you that Hezekiah walked in the ways of David. He didn't walk in the ways of his father, who was an idolater. Hezekiah, it said, walked in the ways of David. So all the kings were compared to whether they walked in the ways of David and kept the commandments or if they disobeyed Yah. So all the kings were held to the standard of David. Not the northern kings. Um, all right, so because um, you don't have no talk reference about, for that, we talk about <laughs> so okay, so so um, you said the sentence there. Okay, so you want to limit it to that? No problem. All right, so the sentence talking, of David. That's what we're talking about. Jesus okay, wait, wait, hold on. Judah, okay, 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 right? okay. Jesus okay, don't come from okay. Israel. He's supposed hold to come on, from Judah. Hold on, he does so come from Israel, the from Jacob. Right. So hold on. Let me let me finish. All right. I got you. I got you. Okay. So I just want to slow it down for a second, right? I don't want to keep getting double team, triple team, quadruple team. It's cool. Oh, sorry right? about that. You're a no, you're guy. good. You're good. You're, you're, good. you're, you're good. the only one with the, the guts. Worst. But you know what, Devon? Much love Thank and respect, you. though, honestly. I, I I love you, brother. I don't take nothing away from what you have. I'm here because doing. of you. That's why and, I'm here. And, and I love you. And you, and you, unlike a lot of others who do not have the courage and face to knock on us. So you at least come in, you deal with us and build with us. And I have so much respect for you for that. Yeah, I have respect for you too because I like you as an elder. I like how you carry yourself. I like your character. And uh, at times you are a good peacemaker. Right. And I and I and I appreciate that. So I, I don't come in here with slander. I don't come in here like a lot of people do and curse you loud and saying y'all this and that. I don't do that. I could care less. about. Oh, no, you that, right? don't. I love yeah. you for that, too. Yeah, yeah. I really I'm, do. I'm here. So that way, together, collectively, we can help those who are listening, who may not be as astute as we are to get somewhere in their journey with Yah. That's the goal. Push everybody towards Yah. Right. I'm, I'm with that. All I was simply saying was, again, and I'm just answering questions that are being asked to me by true Israel as it pertains to the New Testament and Yeshua Bar Yosef in my position. I have no problem answering those questions, but at some point I would like to get back to the Tanakh and ask some questions based on what we were speaking about previously and or ask true Israel what his stance on is on several things. And you're going to see, the audience is listening, you're going to see that there's a divergent amount of positions even amongst those on the stage. It's very easy to kind of splinter it out because I follow Michael, I follow Sage, I follow Sar, right? Sister Deborah that's there as well. I've seen her in rooms and listened to her, right? And I've I've seen things they talked about and I hear the nuances in their subscriptions and I see that they all don't believe the same thing. And that's fine. 
That's fine. I have no problem with that. But true Israel, I don't know him. So I don't know where he stands on these things. And a lot of stuff I was asking him if he's familiar with, he's unfamiliar with. So I just want to know, right, his credence on certain th- certain descriptions that he may have. So true Israel, are we are, are you done with asking me questions? Or do you have more questions you would like to ask me? I just got one more thing I want to bring okay. out because we were talking about the order of Melchizedek. So yes. now, and, and I don't know if you agreed or disagreed that David was a, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. So when you say priest after the order of Melchizedek, right? We go to let's go to Psalm one ten real quick, right? And what I was trying to showcase is that all of his lineage, all his lineage, That's right, fine, have the David, potentiality. Just... Hold on, have the same potentiality. All of David's, because the scripture says in Jeremiah that he would not cease to have a man from the loins of David on his throne before him. That's what he said. That's the scripture in the book of Jeremiah, right? So what I'm saying is all of the sons of David have the potentiality to have the throne of their father, David. The potentiality is that's all I'm saying, right? Now, whether we subscribe to the fact is being executed in the way that we looked at it or not is another situation because when you look at the New Testament, you do have to compare it to the ideological and theological position of the Qumran cave community because there's a lot of parallelisms and similarities. And this is something that is widely known in the field of academia. It's not no secret. Actually, sure there's been over 20 books written on this, right? Um, and four good articles written on it. So I say that to say that we're dealing with a position that people have in the apocalyptic age, right? Which is kicked off by the book of Daniel, which is dated to about 200 BCE in the form that we have today, right? That started off this, this um, attraction to apocalyptic writings. And it gets all the way to the point where we have the uh the stone of Gabriel, right, which is a uh an actual edifice uh stone that somebody has actually incised a prophecy in. And this is not Christians doing that. These are Jews that follow Torah and they write a whole prophecy in it. And you'll see all of these different things like that scattered all throughout this first century CE, that this is the type of age that things are coming out with. So a lot of attributions are going to leaders during the day. Right. There's several of them that came up that had their own followers that performed miracles and did all these things. And then they were killed. And that was the end of that. Right. The teacher of righteousness. Right. Who who was a, a title that uh, the leader of the Krumah community received. They ascribed a whole bunch of scriptures to him, too. Why? Because they believed that he was the Messiah. So what I'm saying is this is what's going on during this time period. So the way you're looking at things, you're not looking at the transition. For example, the, the when you look at the uh, Targum, right? The Targum has language that differs from what we see in the Tanakh. And it's like that for a reason. Certain things are there. Like, for example, they don't even say the full name of Yah. They don't even say Yahweh. They don't even say that in the, in the Targum. And the Targum is Aramaic paraphrasing of a Hebrew text that existed somewhere between the period of 300 to the first century CE, 300 BCE to about 1 CE, I mean, uh, 1 um, BCE, right? So, So now we have that and we have the language in that that differs in ways, especially when it talks about the divine or the divine name than what we see in the Tanakh. We see the same fingerprints in the New Testament. There's a reason why you don't see Yah's name there, because when you look at what had transitioned over time, right, especially after the Jews went into captivity, they ceased from saying the name of Yah. They said Adonai. They said Hashem. These practices go back to Babylon. We have evidence of where the Jews were at in Babylon. That's why I mentioned the Al-Yahudu tablets. And when they were there in Babylon, the Chaldean priests, when they saw the hordes of the Persians invading, they did not want the sacred name of Marduk to be blasphemed. So they called him Bel or Lord in Babylonian. This was predates any writings that we get with that usage to ascribe to Yahweh in the text or by Jews, period. Because what we see in the archaeological evidence is that Yahweh is always ascribed to the name of the deity of the God of Israel. We see that in the Tel Dan Stele. We see that in the Moabite Stele. We see that in Stele that go uh, all the way back to um, 
uh, ancient Egypt in the fourth century BCE. Get the Marna um, in the Soleb temples where that's written and inscribed as well. Yotewav. Right. So the point that I'm making is when you get to the language of the New Testament, there's a book called Targum and Testament. If you're really interested and even care about this type of scholarship, because you ask me a lot of questions that require me to break down a lot of technical things in regards to the transitionary period from the close of Malachi all the way to the opening of these works or these books called the New Testament. And if you don't understand that history, then a lot of stuff that you're seeing is not going to make sense. For example, brother, do you read Targum? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. The Targum is available for free on a website called safaria.org. And when you get a chance, you can read Ankylos or you can read Jonathan, pseudo Jonathan Targum. The Targum, um, if you're if you're not familiar with it, it comes it goes back to the tradition when the Jews came back from Babylonian captivity by way of the Cyrus's decree, right? And by way of Jeremiah speaking about Cyrus being his Mashiach, right? redeeming them from out of the hands of the Babylonians, right? According to what Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations, what they suffered, he redeemed them from that, very similar to how they were redeemed from Egypt, from the hands of their oppressors, and placed them and allowed them to go back and return to the land prior uh, uh, to um, to any other, we would say, ideological changes or shifts or anything like that, right? They came back to the land. They had the Book of the Law. They made a covenant saying that they was going to keep the Book of the Law, right? However, 70 years was their punishment in Babylon, and Babylon, the lingua franca, was Aramaic. It was not Hebrew. So you have these people living there 70 years speaking another language, Aramaic. Hebrew was known by the priestly class, the Zadokites and others, and the elders who were still alive after the 70 years, people who may have been young going into captivity, and now they are like 70, 80, 90 years old right? That's still alive. They could speak Hebrew. They were bilingual, but the successive generations, two generations in captivity, they were speaking Aramaic. So the text says when they stood up to read after they sorted the wood and they had the book of the law and they stood up to read the book of the law, after they read it, some people didn't understand. So they gave the sense. That is where the Targum tradition goes back to, given the sense of what's read in Tanakh, in the Hebrew, Ivri. Right. So now over time, that text actually evolves to a point where Yote Vave is not mentioned anywhere in the Targum. It's not there. They have another phrase that they use for the creator, but Yote Vave is not maintained there. And that is a tradition that comes from Babylonian captivity where you didn't want the heathen to blaspheme the name. This is why when you read the Septuagint, you don't see the name of the creator there, Yote Vave. That's not in the Septuagint either. You see Theos, God. Or you see other words, Kyrios for Lord. And that's superimposed onto the Tetragrammaton. And I'm saying Tetragrammaton because Tetragrammaton is a Greek word that refers to the sacred name of Yah as expressed in four consonants in Hebrew. Right? So if you don't know that history, then when you get to the New Testament and you say, oh, how come the, how come Yah's, the, the Yahweh is not there? Yeah, slow down. It's not in the Septuagint either, All right? And that's a, that's a Greek text, right, from a Hebrew text that preceded it. And then in the Targum, you don't see it there either because this is a transitionary period in how literature is written as it pertains to the God of Israel and his people. So I'm going to put the source up top for y'all to read if y'all even care about this, right, because you asked me a lot of questions that can be resolved in a few books if you read it. Right. I gave two sources earlier, right, in regards to the Nazarenes and the Evianites. Now, let me give you one talk, Targum and Testament, right, so you can get a little bit more information, that, you know, to kind of see what I'm talking about, right? Let me drop that in there for y'all real quick. Hey, I don't know if you're going to read it. Let me know if I'm wasting my time targums. or not. I, I read it. I read it. Can I ask you a question about the Targum? So, you know, in Genesis, in the Targums, it, it shows, um, if, if you're familiar with it, well, you say you are, you know, in Genesis, uh, when when Abraham, when Yah give that prophecy to Abraham, you see how it's worded different in the Targums, where it says that it, it names them four beasts that's also named in Daniel. You, did you notice that? That it said after the like that four hundred year, and people say, "Oh, that four hundred years ain't talking about us." Well, in the Targums, it pushed that four hundred years to after those four beasts. What what what? Where you at? What chapter and what verse? 
oh man, I don't have it now. I just okay. read through it. Um, I'll put the link, but, I'll put the link but, up there for y'all. But if you go in, mm-hmm. in, the, in the beginning, it's when Abraham get that 400 year prophecy. So I think it's Oh, that's the, Genesis 15 you're saying, right? Yep, but it's in the okay. Targums. I don't know if yeah, it's yeah. the same. So, I think so I got, it's the same I, chapter. I, I got the Targums. Yeah, it's the same chapter. Do you I got see the how, it, how, mm-hmm. how it, it got the four beasts in there? Well, yeah, there's a reason for that. And then right. it got the 400 years after those yes, four beasts? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is there's a reason for that. Remember, this is not written during the, the Iron Age period in which the Israelites were sovereign in their land, right? By the time we get to um, Daniel, Daniel is in, um, in, in Babylonian, but then he ends up in Persian captivity where he's giving a prophecy. Daniel's also written in Aramaic, not just Hebrew. And remember, the Targum is all Aramaic. And you do see a lot of similarity between the two, right? So matter of fact, let me read it for you since you brought it up, which I think is an excellent point. See, this is this is what I'm trying to focus on. Y'all keep bringing me to the New Testament, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk about Tanakh, right? So let me read this, right? This is this is Targum Jonathan, right? Genesis 15, right? This is on safari.org. And I'm going to put the, the, the link in the chat in case anybody's interested in reading it. And I'll put it up top. But first, um, True Israel, please download that book that I have up there. Uh, Sar and uh, Sage, if you're interested, click that book up there. You're going to learn a lot about the Targum and uh, the Targum's influence on what's called the New Testament. Yeah, I just got it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and put this link up there for the um, for what Sister um, Sage is talking about. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and read it. Okay. All right. And this is chapter 15. This is what she's, this is what she's talking about. All right. Um, after these words, well, let me skip that. That's a lot. Right. And Abraham, Lord God, blah, blah, blah. All right. Let me jump down. Let me jump down. Okay. Let me go here. All right. This is verse, verse five. Um, and he brought forth without and said, look up now to the heavens and the numbers of the stars that thou art to number them. And he said, so with thy sons. And he believed in the Lord and had faith in the memra, the word of the Lord. You see that? Faith in the word of the Lord. Fascinating. You don't see that in Tanakh. And he reckoned it for him for righteousness. Uh, uh, because he parlayed not before him with words. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you forth thee out of the fiery furnace of Castai to give thee this land to inherit. Uh, and he said, Lord God, by what may I know that I shall be the heir of it? And he said, Bring me oblations and orphan before me a heifer three years, three years, and a goat three years, a ram of three years, and a dove and a young pigeon. And he brought all these before him, divided them in a mist, and set it in order every division against it. But the fowl he divided not. And there came down idolatrous peoples, which are like to unclean birds, to steal away the sacrifices of Israel. But the righteousness of Abraham was the shield over them. Now let me go. Let me go to Genesis fifteen and and um. Genesis 15 and go to verse, uh, go to verse 11, jump down. All right. And it says here, right. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Whole difference in the text right there. Right. Keep this in mind. We're going to see this as we go out through the passage. And this is what sister Sage is pointing out. Right. And then it goes on to say, uh, verse 12, and when the sun was nearing uh, to set, a deep sleep was upon him, Abraham, and behold, four kingdoms arose to enslave his children. You see this? Terah, which is Babel, darkness, which is Madai, greatness, which is Yavan, decline, which is Feras, which is to fall and to have no uplifting, and from whence it is to be that the children of Israel will come up. You see that, Sister Sage? You there? Yes. Okay. Four kingdoms, right? Now, if we go to verse 12 in the biblical translation we have, it simply says, as the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abraham, and behold, dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? But, but so it mentions those same four beasts that Daniel mentioned, right? Yeah. Or, or kingdoms, right? That the beasts represent, right? Um, and that's what we see here in verse 12. Right. Because Daniel mentions four beasts and this explains to him that those are four kingdoms. Right. That's what he is. He's given and he tells that to the king. Right. Here you'll see that whoever is putting this together is using those elements. Remember what I said that the book of Daniel, because it's written in Aramaic, is what is influencing this apocalyptic age that we find going about during this, quote unquote, intertestamental period. That's what God was calling it. Right. This period of time from the close of Malachi all the way to the opening of the first century C.E. 
right? And you'll see what they're doing is they're adding these elements. They're giving insight. The Septuagint does something very similar. This is why these are not direct translations. They actually go back to oral traditions. Either they're giving commentary based on something else in, in Tanakh, or they're giving their own insight to make the text more colorful and insightful for the reader who is reading it in a different language other than Hebrew. Because this accumulation of all the customs and tenets and subscriptions that they had from the close of Malachi all the way up until the point where this is penned down. And the earliest that we have for this is the, around the first century BC or CE that we have the, the Targum in its written form. But we know that it goes back earlier than that because of the way that the Aramaic is framed in various passages of this text. Right. But you'll see here, we don't see this in, in the Bibles that we have. Right. In the Tanakh that we have, we don't see nothing like what it says in verse 12 about four kingdoms to enslave his children. Right. But this also represents the Targum, which I subscribe to the Targum. Right. The Targum represents a lot of elements that are not there in the Tanakh, in the version that we have derived from the Masoretic text. Right. Um, and the Masoretic text goes back to a proto Masoretic text that is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And the textual transmission of the text can be demonstrated to go back as far as to about the 9th, 10th century BCE, the, the earliest. Right. And it's written form. Right. So we'll see that. That's why that's why I have no problem when I see stuff like that, because I know the history and why it's being scribed in in the way it is. Right. So hopefully that explains it. Yeah, yeah. it does. It does. I mean, thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Divine, for your patience. Because I, and I really appreciate the uh, the lesson you've given us and the audience. I and mean, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, I don't think necessarily that you answered my question because I, I just want to. Um, to know, do you think that David, not not his descendants, but David was a priest after the order of Melchizedek, that David fulfilled the requirements to be a, a priest after the order of Melchizedek? Um, I don't. So, what are, what are, where are the requirements listed out for me to say yes or no? I mean, I could read king. Psalm one ten. A, right, a, a righteous king. Mm -hmm. He was a righteous king. Correct. And he did. So. In, in Psalm, in Psalm one ten, it said that the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies, which David did. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He will lift the places with, his, with the dead bodies. He will wound, wound the head over many countries. So David did that in like Second Samuel eight, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, know. He, I yeah, yeah. So, so, so I got you. So, I, what's I about one the, more thing. okay. So you agree with that? I was just want to read one more thing, and then we can go. We can go on. You can ask me questions. Mm -hmm. um, it says in First Samuel sixteen thirteen it says, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, talking about David, in the midst of his brethren, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David. From that day forward, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So when Samuel anointed David with the oil, uh, and the, the holy oil, that all we know all the kings had to be anointed with, uh, which uh, Jesus never was. But anyway, um, it, it says the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So David was a priest after the order of Melchizedek, as you agreed, and he had the spirit of the Most High from the time that he, he was uh, anointed. So why uh, couldn't he be the one doing what you think the Christ of the New Testament is doing? I don't know what you mean, the Christ of the New Testament. You, is said, doing, that, so. you, said, you said Jesus, the son of Joseph, is making is, is in heaven making atonements. For the, for I the said he's a mediator. Well, well, okay, then, okay, then why can't David be that mediator? I mean, if you if you can show me text where he's doing that there, then I'll subscribe but to you, it. But you can't show me text where James, where Christ. So what? So we're at an impasse then. All right. So let me get back I, I, to I what's actually no, Psalm one ten. That, that was my question. That was, that was my question. Okay, there. and I answered it. So let me get to Psalm one ten. Show me a list of stipulations that qualifies someone as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Where is that at? No, no, no. We know that Melchizedek was a king, right? And he was a priest too, because he offered right, on behalf he was a, he of was a Abraham. King on earth. He was an earthly king, right? And he offered on behalf of Abraham. But he was an earthly king, right? Correct. That offered on and behalf was, was of Christ Abraham. Was Christ an earthly king? Was Christ an earthly king? Was he an earthly king? Yes. Yeah. He was. He he was from the king lineage of, of David. 
You said the king, king of what? Where, what? Yeah, where did he? What throne did he ever sit on? on he Earth? didn't sit on the throne until after oh, thank he died. You, thank you, thank you. According to the text, but I never said he sat the on the throne and ruled. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's in Jerusalem, right? Hold on. I, well, I don't know about that because um, okay. it's not there today. You can show me where the throne of David is at in Jerusalem today. Where is it at? I agree. I've been there. Back I didn't see it. Back then. Back then, when in the first century CE, that David's throne was still there in Jerusalem. Where, where are you getting you. that from? No, I'm asking you. I'm asking a question. No, you, no, his you, throne wasn't there. No, okay. so when they so he never sit so on the throne then. Well, no, he didn't sit on a literal throne. No, he did not. David did, right? Of David course, did, David so, did, you know, did because Israel was still in sovereignty. Israel was still in their sovereignty at that, that time. I'm just Hold on. Question. Uh, I'm trying to answer your question, but you're just cutting into another question. I'm trying to give you an answer to your question. I said that when David sat on the throne, Israel was in their sovereignty at that time. There was no sovereignty for Israel in the first century CE. So obviously he's not sitting on the throne ruling a kingdom. He explains, according to the testimony of the authors of the text, what his kingdom was. He said it from himself, and that's what he stated, right? But again, we go into the book of John, and in the book of Matthew, that's not there. But I told you that I subscribed to the OSS, which is the book of Matthew, and I read that from you earlier, right? Right, that was in the but book we, of but John. But we're going somewhere else. Yeah, you're right, and, that, and we're going somewhere else, right? But that's fine, right? The potentiality of him to reign in an eschatological fashion, as we see in works in the Dead Sea Scrolls, because I mentioned to you, like the Scroll of Mechizedek, et cetera, it talks about somebody coming from the loins of David, right, who represents the lineage of David to fight, physically fight Kittim, which is the Romans, and the enemies of Israel, right? And then we also see, it talk about Mechizedek, which it represents a priest who's going to come back and atone for Israel before the physical battle takes place. Right. This is in the scroll of Mechizedek, right? Why is all this important? Because now we're looking at different ways in which the text is being interpreted in the first century CE. You also have the two Messiah theory that's found in Judaism that believes something extremely similar to that. Right. So when you look at that, the key thing is who in the apocalyptic period are they ascribing these things to? You had tons of Messiah figures that had came about from the Maccabean revolt all the way to the 18th, 19th century, that that those that Jews were looking for a Messiah figure to fulfill prophecy. So what I'm saying is, according to the New Testament, those prophecies that we see not in Christianity, outside of Christianity, these people in the text who were Jews were ascribing it to a one of the, their leader who they followed, a person who they held in high esteem. No different than rabbi and sages in Judaism. No different than the teacher of righteousness in the Quran community. No different than any of that. I'm just trying to give you how they're viewing things within the light of their time period. For example, there were people from Judah that was amongst the Quran community. And there was some that was also claiming to be from the lineage of David. So they automatically was given the right to rule in that community because of that. Was they sit on a literal throne of David? No, they wasn't sit on a literal throne of David. But they had a whole bunch of followers there that was following after them. And they believed them to be a Messiah figure to fulfill prophecies because they were waiting for David to come back and he never did. Just like they're waiting for Yeshua, Jesus, or whoever to come back and he never did. All right? This stuff ain't happened yet, so we're still waiting. And this is why as time progresses, people keep ascribing it to this person and that person, this figure and that figure, et cetera, et cetera. So, Hopefully that answers ad infinitum what you have requested from me. Um, and I can start asking you questions because you said that was your last question. So I'm not yeah, saying yeah, that yeah, Jesus sat on a literal throne. I didn't say that. And I don't I don't propose that. Right? And, and you and you and you actually and you also said that David, uh this, these things can be described to David, so I appreciate that. What's what's these things you say? That he can Every, be a mediator. He can be the mediator. Yeah, we've seen him. We've seen him mediate on several counts. I don't have no problem with that. I have no issue with that. And you said that he was the son yeah. of God. I mean, I don't know if he's mediating right now. Maybe you could tell me. Is he mediating for Israel right now? Uh, because last time I read in Daniel, it says that Mikhail is the one that's standing up on behalf of Israel in these last days. So that's then what the it's, text not, says. it's not. Then it's not Jesus, then, right? 
I mean, I, in regards to the position, Jesus is supposed to be doing some priestly work up there, according to the book of Hebrews. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Then couldn't it be David doing the priestly work? I mean, it can be if you can show me a passage showing that. I don't you see can't it. Show me one that says, and that's why I said that it, I can't show you a passage. That's what, that's, what that's, what, that's what I said. We have a we have an. Impasse, I said where I said we're at an David. impasse, but we're still but you, talking that's what about. I'm it. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that you, you agree though it can be David, right? I never said I'd had no problems with David fulfilling this stuff in the earth as attested by the Tanakh. I mean, I'm talking no about problem in the, with in that. The heaven, in the no, heavens. I don't. I don't. I don't have any. I don't have the thing to indicate that that's the case. So I don't. I don't say that, right? That's what I'm saying. But, you, don't, you don't have anything to indicate that Jesus. But no, we'll just stop. Well, there. not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not in, the, not, not in the Tanakh. Not in the Tanakh. I don't. No, I don't. I don't right, have that right. in the Tanakh. So that's it. Yeah. All right. So before I go, because I I should have left about an hour and a half ago, because I have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, but I'm gonna stay here off the strength of Sister Sage just to build a little bit more. I wanted to ask you some questions now, since you subjecting yourself to a hot seat as well, and see some things, right? So the question that I have for you, my brother, is do you subscribe to the Zohar? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Do you practice Kabbalah? No. Okay. Um, what books of the Tanakh is authoritative to you and which ones are inserted by man? Uh, I accept the Tanakh. What does that mean? That means Job too? Except all, all the books. Book of Job too? Yes. Okay. So you believe Job is um, yeah, Job, inspired? Job's called right? righteous. In the book of Ezekiel, he's called righteous. Of course. See, see, that's what I was going to ask. I'm glad you got there. That's what I was getting at. You know, sis, yeah. if you're there, do you, is, was that the pen of the crafty scribes that wrote that in there about Job? In the book of Ezekiel? Yes, it was. Ah, see, I knew <laughs> she was going to say that. All right. <laughs> all right. So, so okay, Trujillo. So, um, the reason why I was asking that was based on something we were discussing earlier. And if you do subscribe to the book of Job, right, um, how what would what how would you identify Shatan that's mentioned there? Who is he? What is he? He's an angel from uh, created by the most high. Okay. So he's an angel created to do what? What's his mission, purpose, intent? He is to he's an he's a tester, he's an adversary to test us. Okay, to test us. Is he adversarial towards Yahweh? No, he works for Yahweh. Okay, so he's not adversarial towards Yahweh, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, so we, we agree there because I don't see dualism in the Tanakh. Um, that comes much later after they rubbed shoulders with Zoroastrianism, right? Okay, good. That's good to know. All right, so with that being the case, um, how far back would you say the, the Old Testament goes? What time period would you give it? Oh, I would. That Torah you. was written. Let's say the Pentateuch Torah. At what time period would you give it? The Chumash. I would give it, um, you know, twelve hundred BC. Twelve hundred BC. Okay. Um, and you believe that Moses wrote it? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Even the parts where Moses uh, is talking about Moses' death in Deuteronomy. Uh, yes, I think he wrote. Okay. The, the when you say the Pentateuch, uh, there could be parts that he didn't write. Okay, so the parts he didn't write, who wrote them? Uh, I I don't know the things that that aren't gotcha. Joshua. Gotcha. So if you don't, so hold on, I'm talking, I got you, Sar. I know your position. I'm talking to true Israel, right? And you said a man can stand on his own, so I'm trying to let the man stand on his own, right? All right. So, um, so whoever wrote them, you still believe whatever parts of that that was written is inspired by Yah, correct? And what uh, we yes, have sir. today, yep. okay, yep. got it, got it. All right. So, um, and that's the second thing. Uh, the third thing is, um, what is your position after we die? What happens to us? Do you have scripture for that? Oh, I think uh, like the the book says, we gather to our fathers. The, our spirit goes back to Yah. Okay, and what happens to Anifesh? Uh, we just rest in the earth. Okay, and that and that is how we are for eternity, correct? Uh, unless the Most High brings us back. Okay, is that is that something that He intends to do? I think He intends to bring the righteous back, mm -hmm. like it says in Daniel. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And um, for the book of Daniel itself, right, it has parts that are Aramaic. All right. It's claimed to be Aramaic. I don't know if, if you care about that or whatever, but um, those parts that are claimed to be Aramaic, how did they get into the book of Daniel? And are they inspired? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, some people have problems with the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've questioned the book of Daniel from time to time. Mm -hmm. But, uh if you're asking me about the um, uh, the language, are you asking me about 
Yeah, the, the, yeah. It's about about uh, Aramaic being in the in parts of the Book of Daniel. Well, I, I just okay. uh, I believe that it was written um, when the, when the, when the I, Israel... I can explain this. I, I could explain that. that. That's easy. Daniel is schooled in the language of the Chaldeans, right? So he he comes into Babylon at fourteen understanding the Hebrew tongue. So he, he he wrote part of it in the Hebrew. But he learned the, the language of the Chaldeans. They spent 70 years there. So some of them grew up there and only know the la the language of the Chaldeans. I got so you. So he got to talk to them people too. Mm -hmm. So do so you have a paper passage that says that? The, you got to look at the history though. No, no, no. I, I, I'm i familiar with the history and I agree with you on the history. Okay, so that, that, you that's a, how you explain what I'm that's how you explain that away. I got you. So, brother, listen, I'm saying, do you have a passage in Daniel that says that? What do you mean do I have a passage? You want me to show you where Daniel was t was forced to learn the language of the Chaldeans? Yeah, just give me that passage. That's all. I'm not saying okay. it's not We're there. I'm saying, can you give me the passage? Mm -hmm. Daniel but, chapter 1. Okay. And what verse says? Can you read that? Because this goes into my follow-up question. Mm-hmm. What verse says Sage? All right, let me get it for you. Okay. And, and Divine, you notice my answers are, are very short, very yep. succinct to, to the point. I'm not they trying are. to obfuscate anything. They are, and I and I give you time to answer it too before I ask you another one. <laughs> um, this is so, a, this is gonna be the trap quest question. No, it's not a trap question. Um, you want me to read it? Yeah, I didn't come here. I didn't come here for a trap question. I mean, you I do that in debates. Oh, I'm just um, this trying to see. You want me to read it? Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. Read out yeah, the verse. The verse. Okay. Um, Daniel, Daniel one with verses. Daniel chapter one. Mm -hmm. I can. I'm gonna read from one to five. Um, six. I read one to six. It okay. says, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. king of Babylon, marched on Jerusalem and besieged it. Yahweh let Jehoiakim, king of Judah, fall into his power, as well as some of the vessels belonging to the temple. These he took away to Shinar, putting the vessels into the treasury of his own gods. From the Israelites, the king ordered Ashpenaz, the chief eunuch, to bring a certain number of boys of the royal a noble descent. They had to be without any physical defect of good appearance, vessels in every branch of wisdom, well-informed, discerning, suitable for service at the royal court. Aspionaz was to teach them to speak and write the language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily allowance of food and wine from the royal table. They were to receive an education lasting for three years, after which they would enter the royal service. Among them were the Judeans, Daniel, Hananiah, Mashiel, and Azariah. Okay. Um, and you ended up what verse? Six. Six. Got it. All right. Thank you for reading that. And that's, and that's, what, that's what I was trying to do. I was getting to scripture because I wanted to ask a question. And this was specifically for true Israel. But I guess you and um, Sar can jump in. All right. So, um. So when we get to the Aramaic parts of the book of Daniel, right, for example, one of the Aramaic parts of the book of Daniel uh, is the statue of Nebuchadnezzar in his dream, right? Uh, why are those portions written in Aramaic as opposed to Hebrew? If you even subscribe to any of this, because I know you don't care about Hebrew that you call Yiddish, maybe you call it Aramaic Yiddish. No, 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 no. I, I never said anything. No, I never said no, I didn't care. No, no, about not you, true Israel. Israel. I was talking about like Sar and Sage because they jumped in. No, but earlier you said I didn't care about the Hebrew. I, I, that's not what I said. I, I said I don't read Hebrew. So there's no reason to to speak in Hebrew or read something in using the Hebrew language. Because it, it doesn't. Uh, do you do you have an work. interest in learning the language? Just a question. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm actually ambivalent about it. Okay. Um, so. Okay. No problem. All right, so um, so I don't know if you want the reason. I, there's a reason why I'm I'm talking about Aramaic, the Book of Daniel, um, and why I mentioned the Targum earlier and things of that nature, right? I'm just because Sar mentioned history, and I gave you a lot of history as well. 
about how all of this stuff is developing over time and how certain perspectives shift because of the introduction of Aramaic as a language, right? Which describes the uh, tongue of their captivity. Would you agree that Aramaic was the tongue of their captivity? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So they speak in their uh, captive tongues and Daniel is given prophecies in a captive tongue, right? Um, when you see the parts of uh, Daniel, that's in Aramaic. Can we find the creator's name in any of those parts that are in Aramaic? Uh, do we do we find the creator's name anywhere in Daniel? Yeah, I'm talking about the portions that's in Aramaic. The ancient of days is described as the ancient of days in Daniel seven. So we don't see the creator's name. That's who he is. That's who the ancient of days is. I'm He's saying, do we see the creator's name? Do we see Yahweh anywhere in Daniel chapter 2, verse 4 to chapter 7, verse 28? You tell us. Do you see no, any? no. I'm giving you. So you want me to do the homework for you? No, you don't. And my next what question is, after that is why not? What, 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 does that what does that tell you? What does that, that tell tells you? me a lot. But I'm trying no. to. Okay. So what, what, like what? what does it tell you? I was telling me that there's a reason why the Aramaic does not have the creator's name. And it's the same okay. reason why you don't find it in the Targum. And it's the same reason why you don't find it in works by Jews in the first century, second century, and third century CE. Mm -hmm. So, so if you want, you can go back and look at the tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you what I suspect. That's fine. Right? I want to hear what you think. Okay, I suspect that because he's speaking another tongue that they tampered with it and they took out the name. What? And that's where you start seeing them taking out the name of Yah. Who tampered with it? What do you mean who tampered with it? You said they tampered with it. Who's they? Yeah, they tampered. The people Who's who they? write the Septuagint. The, the Septuagint. Septuagint? We're in Daniel in Aramaic. We're not even in the Septuagint. Right. But that's when they get they start burning the book. Wait, wait, wait. Greek, Daniel, the, the Daniel was written book. before the Septuagint is even on the scene. I get that, but you, we don't have no original copies of Daniel. We have no original copies of right. none of the texts we're talking about right now. No exactly. autographs exist. Exactly. Exactly. So when was the okay. original copy destroyed? You said when was when the original destroyed? copy destroyed? Yeah. When were all the original copies destroyed? I have no clue. We have a mention in Maccabees okay. where the Greeks... Start exactly. Burning the book. What, when what? all the original copies are destroyed, I don't. The text doesn't say that all the original copies. Well, are destroyed. well tell me what. Tell me another place then. No, they. they you there's see multiple that, times. You see that oh, kind of on, I, 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 Let me give you an example, right? So uh, there was a siege on Jerusalem in 70 CE, which you're aware of, right? Which is also shown in the Arch of Titus, which is in 85 AD. They show them taking and pillaging and removing books, the menorah, okay. and other items from out of the temple, right? Okay. Okay. That's another time where books were removed. That's not the only time. So this and it is happened what I again in this the fourth century. Okay, go ahead. This is what I'm looking for, right? I'm, I'm looking for it in writing. Because this is how it's written. This is how the Greeks did it. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 56. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, which they found, they burned them with fire. Them your original copies. Them I don't your think scrolls. original copies, but them they the one, But listen, it was but only the ones. Hear me out. Them, them yeah. your scrolls. Because they came back from Babylon with everything. Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, uh, Cyrus, when he gave that decree, he gave uh, Zerubbabel everything they took out of the temple. All those scrolls. All those vessels, the manure, all that, he gave it back to them. So they got it then when they're going back into the land. They lose it right here. This is when everything burns. And so now. Are you, you saying. Got, are you well, saying. When you wait, got, hold on. Honey, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So now when you got a document now called the Septuagint and you don't see the father's name in it no more. Guess why? They took it out. Who's they? It was Jews that translated it. I just showed you who took it out. Why? Why? Wait, wait. Like why? It? Why did Jews who translated? Why did they take it out? 
the first translation is your Septuagint. I'm asking you again. Why did Jews who translated the Septuagint first, take that's it out? Your first, that's your first translation, right? No, it's not. It's it's a purported. Show me that a previous. The, hold hold on. Show it's me purported, I'm, I'm about to tell you. It's purported that the Targum is the first translation from Hebrew to Aramaic upon returning back from Persian captivity into the land. Okay. And then a book was found, and a book was established right. by Nehemiah and by Ezra, and then the people started reading from that book, right? Okay. So, 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 you're so my then point. a you're no, so my a, point. wait, wait. So Let then the translation was made oh, no, 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 into no, no. Aramaic. Walk with me, walk, walk with me, walk with me right here, real quick. You just read in the Targum, right? When they took out the four hundred years, so now Abraham's dreadful dream is just described as a dreadful dream. They took out the four hundred. No, it's years. not. It's talking about what would happen to uh, his seed. And exactly, the transatlantic slave, the transatlantic slave trade. Abraham prophesied about that. Abraham prophesied Daniel, about the transatlantic that, slave trade. Where, where, where is what, that? At? What is the what is the four hundred years? I don't. I don't, what, I don't, I don't subscribe that? that to be the. I don't subscribe that to be the transatlantic. So, so we ain't been in. We ain't been in the worst captivity on earth in the human history of mankind. These four hundred years we've been in America. I'm not this saying nothing about that. This ain't I'm the worst captivity Israel ever had. I'm saying that the Book of Genesis is not talking about our quote unquote four hundred. We wasn't so even. Why they take? Why they was, take it out? Listen, listen, brother. So listen, why brother. they take it out though? Hold on, brother. Why they take it out in your KJV? Wait one second. You said my KJV. I don't even read the KJV. When you so say 400 years, brother, listen, 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 listen brother, brother. Hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry listen, sorry, sorry, listen, listen, sorry. Right, you said it's not a Septuagint. I didn't read the Septuagint, but I can go to. I know you read the Targum. Gotcha. You read so, the Targum, which is closer to the original scrolls. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm gonna say to you is this, right? What time frame are you saying that we were here for 400 years of slavery? Where was the time frame? From what year to what year is your 400 years? Oh man, I can't stand having these conversations with y'all, man. Who's y'all? You I just asked you. you I just asked you, you to give me dates. Have been through I'm just asking you for years. dates. Just give me the time period. What's I'm the 400 years? All that scholarship. 1619 to 2019. You know, is that what you're all saying? That scholarship, and they didn't teach you about the slave trade. About the trade. You, the worst are, slavery we've been through. Are, are you serious, brother? Man, all you gotta do is, listen, brother. Type my here. take my name up on YouTube. Put slave oh, trade, oh, and mind. you tell me how many videos come up. You tell me how many videos come up. I'm gonna let you do that. Because I can't yeah, just put those videos back in the past. So you type they, my they, name in, type in slave trade, and you tell me how many videos come up. Okay? So you don't believe in slave trade now? Divine, uh, the, when did I say I that? I said type. Okay, time. audience, type my name in YouTube, type in slave trade, and y'all tell me how many videos come up since yes. he says I don't believe in the slave trade. This is this is yeah. ridiculously asinine. But, but only only the most high knows the exact time frame, Divine. I mean, that's Thank you, answer. brother. Thank you for being honest. I appreciate that, right? And the reason for that is if you studied the slave trade, brother, We've been in captivity since the 15th century. You your understand? President Trump, your president did you hear, did you hear what I said? Out, 15th century? Did you hear what I said? Your President Trump, your president Trump came out with that HR or whatever. And he I'm said, not talking about HR. What are you talking about? But it don't matter. The, the, the United States federal government recognizes black people been in slavery for 400 years. So your opinion doesn't trump the United States government. Okay, it don't. Yours don't. Mine don't. They, they trump their opinion. Trump's our opinion. And I they think, say uh, we've been okay. here for four hundred years. Okay. Okay. So you said. So you said we've been here for four hundred years. All right. You saying they said that? You said HR or whatever. So you don't have a you don't have a real reference, right? A, a citation to something that we can go back and look at. Correct. HR forty, dude. Look it up. So, so, all that scholarship, so H, dude. Brother, so, brother. Bro, you, they, I, whatever I college share. you went to, they owe you money, bro. No, they don't owe me they nothing. They hijacked your education, no, they, bro. They, no, they don't owe me anything. You, they you're owe you the, money. You're talking about the Commission to Study and Develop Reparation Proposals for America, African Americans Act. That's what you're talking about. That was introduced you, you know in 1989 by you know Rep. John it, Conyers. Why Listen, why brother. Hold on. You know about slavery? Why are you playing dumb? The, okay, so you, nobody's you, playing you dumb. Propagate, you, you propagate white supremacy. You are no, that's that's right? a negative. And I, you I don't are, like doing that with folks. 
brother. I don't brother, like I'm doing not, that with my people who don't recognize. I'm, I'm not enemy, promulgating bro. white supremacy. That is that is that is a lie, right? Because I'm actually in the field fighting it. I don't see you anywhere. I'm I in the field tell. fighting it. Can't well, you, you can say whatever you want, right? But you can, but I can, I can give you some names that you can ask about me around. And if you want to see care. for yourself, just type my name in on YouTube. Resume. Now you don't care about anything. I don't, I don't care I'm about your resume. I don't care this. But I'm yet I'm promulgating white resume. supremacy. But I'm in the field fighting it, and you saying I'm promoting it. I don't know what you fight, see. It, see, it gets into the it gets into the ad hominems at some point, which you saw. And this is why it's very difficult to have long, extended conversation with you because you start getting no, personal and honest. making attacks. I am I being honest. Be honest. And I said Genesis 15 we're, has we're nothing to do. Genesis like 15. Paul. Listen, we're this is my position. Like and just be, just because you disagree with it is fine. We're, we're I, like don't okay, you, I don't subscribe. I don't subscribe. You give up. You jump through loop. I don't subscribe. You jump through loop. I don't subscribe that Genesis 15. No about the 400 years has anything to do with us here. There's other passages that we can look at that talk about us here in captivity and exile. Genesis 15 is not one of them, and that's my position. Now, you can disagree, and I just said Genesis 15 is where that's mentioned. You can disagree, and that's fine, but see, I'm not going to the personal attacks with you. You're doing that with me, and you're much older than me, and you're supposed to be acting like an elder, and you don't, and it's sad. Because you start to get to personal attack. You just said you promulgating white supremacy. That's insulting. No, I'm not. No, no, it is a personal attack. It's not true, number one. It's a lie. And then I'm not giving I'm not No, you are. No, I was talking I was talking to true Israel and then he jumped in. I mean, I I was talking to all of us. This no, I'm just, talking to true Israel like he was saying. talking to me. This is all I say. We all share in this. All right. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to step away That's because now it's getting heated unnecessarily. Uh, no, gonna, I'm I'm, no, no, it's, it's okay. Leila Tov. Leila Tov. Right? Um, and, and it, Before you go, yes, I yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you said you subscribe. Uh, well, you didn't say. Do you subscribe to the Targums and the Mishnah and the uh, Zohar? Do you subscribe to those books? Uh, so the Targum, I read it historically, right? And there's elements of it that explains the development of thought of the Jews, right? During that period of time, uh, the Targum. And you said, what's the other one you said? Uh, the Mishnah. The Mishnah. Yeah, the Mishnah is also good uh, to explain how the quote-unquote oral law was codified through various Beit Din councils. So yeah. all of that is historical for me. It's historical data for me. What about the Talmud? Uh, well, the, the the Mishnah is in the Talmud, so the Gemara. No, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to anything I mean, in the Gemara. Okay. Yeah, I don't subscribe to anything in the Gemara. I don't subscribe to the Mishnah. It's useful for me in regards to see various rulings that was done to collate and codify what's called the Oral Torah, right? And seeing that historically, right, um, that was that was completed in 200 CE, and the Targum also historically to show the development in the thought of the Israelites. While they're in captivity and going into an apocalyptic age, which spins the show and explains all the super pitiful writers that we see by the Jews all the way up until the first, second, and third century CE. Yeah, so you're pretty close to putting down the uh, Matthew. As soon as you put down Matthew, then you'll join us, right? Uh, no, not at all, because my position would be <laughs> similar to what you find in the Kumam community, uh, which is, which is, yeah, which is um, diametrically opposed to what you find in uh, uh, what we call rabbinic Judaism. Yeah, it's not the mm -hmm. same. It's almost similar to the Kairites who reject the rabbinic authority, right? right. So, right. yeah, my position wouldn't be uh, again. I don't know. I don't know how much of Judaism you subscribe to. Um, no, I'm no, assuming... I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't subscribe to Judaism. Okay, so you don't subscribe to the Talmud either, the Mish, the Midrashim, none of that, right? right, right, right okay, right. cool, cool, cool. Okay, I mean, we have a lot, a lot of common ground, um, and if we continue to talk just about that, then we can explore how far it goes. Um, but when you take the conversation to the New Testament, then now we have a different conversation because there is an evidential disagreement there, right? So, right, right. But do, but you did agree that David fulfills all those requirements. So, I mean, that's all that's all that's important. That David could actually be doing what you ascribe to the uh, the son of Joseph, right? No, we could speculate it. Yeah, I mean, we could, be, we could speculate that he's up there doing something. I don't know what. You know what I mean? But um, again, I guess we can explore <laughs> that in detail another time. You know what I'm saying? So. No, I appreciate I appreciate this. Uh, I really do. I'm not just saying it. I really appreciate the, your your patience. Oh yeah, um, yeah. See, I don't I don't mind. I'll do this for hours with y'all. Yeah, but true Israel. Um, the only reason why I had some 
push back with you is because I wanted to stay in Tanakh and you move towards the New Testament. And that's fine. Yeah. But, but you I, never I once disrespected me. Tanakh. Yeah, you never right. once disrespected me. You never said that I promulgate white supremacy. You didn't say that I, I wasn't a believer or anything like that. So that's why as long as the ad hominem is off the table, then we could talk for hours, even if we disagree. But when the conversation starts getting muddy and people start saying, you know, take things personal and start ascribing things to you that they can't not validate whether it's true or not, then that's why I'm about to leave and say goodnight. Not that I have anything personal against Star. I have no issue against him. I haven't called him out his name. I never say he supports white supremacy, even though I may think that or anything like that, right? Um, but when it starts to come out and we're trying to really build on information, it starts to muddy the waters in the stage and the audience can no longer learn at that point. It's going to be a shot match back and forth. And I just don't want to do that at four in the morning when I got to work in a couple of hours. That's all. So I appreciate um, at you, True. I know Sister Sage says she's going to bed. I'm here because of her. And I have a lot of respect for that sister. Um, we've been in rooms together where we fought shoulder to shoulder. You know what I'm saying? And we've been in rooms, especially like this, where we was you know going back and forth. But she's never been hostile towards me. She's never disrespected me. She's actually carried herself like a true elder. And even though I disagree with her and I'll go back and forth, I will always have her back, right? Because she has proven that, right? Sar, I have no, have no issue with him, but he is a firecracker, right? So at some point, I know it's going to get to what we were just at. <laughs> I, already, I already know that. And again, you don't get mad at somebody's nature, right? That's just who they are, right? You don't get mad at a dog because it barks or bites because that's what it is. So when you study people, people have a nature, right? That doesn't mean you have to subject yourself you to that nature. A, you call me a dog. No, no I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't call, I didn't call you a dog. I'll just try to give an example, right? But a dog is a man's best friend, they say, right? But what I was saying is um, because I know I know he's that type of, he's like, he's like an uncle that I had that passed away about six years ago and me and him be cool, but then he'll take something personal and instead of like, because we're family, instead of him like outrightly cursing me or nothing like that, he'll start saying, oh, well, you support this and you did this. And I love that man, right? I love him. Sarge, just like him. He reminds me of my uncle that passed. He has the same name as me too. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I tolerate it because I'm familiar with that personality. But just like I did with my uncle, I can get up and walk away and say, yo, uncle, I love you, man. I see where this is going. I'm going to go ahead home, right? So so that's how I see it. That's why I see y'all's family. When we get in these rooms, I have a profile of everybody, right? I went to I went to uh, college for French psychology. I never graduated, but I went there for about three years when I was younger. And they taught us how to profile people, right? And the reason for learning how to profile is to see the potentiality that everybody has to commit a crime, right? Like, like if you look at a person, for example, somebody that's always using language that is covetous, uh, at some point they may steal when nobody's watching. Right. And sometimes you may not be able to account for their absence. Right. Because they're they are out taking something. Right. Or scheming to get something from somebody. Right. These are just things that you look for in profiles. But they also showed us how to profile people who are upstanding citizens. Right. People who you can tell this person is not going to commit a crime, that they can be trustworthy, et cetera. So amongst your family, you have people that's the same way. Right. You can't choose who you was born into the world with. But you can choose at some point and say, yo, I love you. But, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to step away for a second. So that's my cue. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for having me. Um, even for Sister Sage for modding me. It's a great discussion. And I will always come back to your rooms, even if we disagree, because I just love the build. That's all.